This video is sponsored by Blood Servants, the upcoming cooperative hack and slash dungeon crawler. Head on over to their Steam page now to sign up for their playtest. Well, hello everyone, welcome back to Second Wind. I am Marty, Frost is joining me, and we are here for a little Final Fantasy VII Rebirth adventure. Um, Frost, I had a few ideas for what to do for the stream. I was like, maybe All we'll right. just play the first two hours of the game, maybe I'll just take a two hour chunk, and then I was like, no, no. What I want to do, since since all the all the adults are away, and, <laughs> and we could frolic, I just want to go on a little vibe check around the world. I want to just take you. I'm in a, I'm in a post game file. So I finish the game. After you finish the game, you can roll the game back a couple chapters to when like everything was nice and nothing scary. And from here, we can just zoop around the world. And I just want to go and just just show you a bunch of the places I like. I want to show people in the audience like, hey, this game for me was the sum of a whole mess of uh, wonderful little vibes and moments and and places and little and little nooks and crannies. And so we'll just show those off. A little like virtual tourism. Here, That's what we're gonna check. do. That's what we, I feel. Like so many games are. Beach are episode. I think we're, this is our beach. Listen, we're not only it, not only is this our beach episode. We will get to the beach and we will be able to put on our beach clothing throughout this episode. But we don't get in the water. Um, uh, we did no, never get in the water. Not after we. Eat. No. Um, how are you doing? I'm doing great. It's fantastic. Sunny days. Weather's not obnoxious just yet, but it's getting there. So I'm just taking it all in. It has been so well, windy. Like, uh, it has been like terrifying. I'm like, my house is gonna blow over. I'm just not gonna have a house, or I'm gonna have an upside down house. It's been crazy, Wendy. All right, Stranger Things reference there for, for those of you. Oh, think about that, oh, little Dewey. Go, I don't. That show didn't have Dewey. No, that was Malcolm in the Middle. <laughs> <laughs> Imagine if the Malcolm in the Middle boys had to deal with the upside down. I don't think they would. Oh, they had Brian Cranston there. He could. He, he could, could deal with it. Yeah, their Brian mom, Jane Kaczmarek. Times. She knew what was going on. Yeah, and be smart with the $2. Woohoo! Looking forward to this. All right, all right. So, so we're going. I'm going to hold out my hand like it is a nice, a fine wine. Okay. Give me a nice tasting. Especially, this is interesting because I've never fantasied. You've never finally. fantasied? You've and never first way, fantasied, let alone final no. fantasied. I, I know the sword. Yeah. And it, and is it in Kingdom Hearts? Isn't that Mickey's sword? No, Mickey has a keyblade, I believe. Keyblade. That's right. <laughs> I know this, this sword. Is, do you know the sword's name? This sword right here. Cloud Junior. No, uh, that's that would be pretty funny if you called it the Buster Sword. Buster Sword. Bustin, okay, I Bustin thought it, makes I thought it was a style. Good. Is that is it a, a genre of sword or is it actually his name? Yeah, uh, no, it's just called the Buster Sword. And in one of the prequel games, Crisis Core, you learn the history of the Buster Sword and where it came from because okay. the Buster Sword is like passed that. down. Um, oh, okay. This first place we have, so this little nook, you can look right. and you see this little town uh, uh, in the distance, and that is the town where uh, the first game takes place. So the entirety of the first game takes place in the town that we see in the distance, named Midgar, and you escape oh, the town okay. at the end of it, and you can't go back to it. So, Well, probably the next you game you'll go back to it. but um, can't go back to it ever? You know what? Maybe that's like you can never go home again. Well, you're kind of, like, wanted. You're, like, wanted by the town's government and the police, and they'll probably, like, execute you if you go back to town. And there's some, like, multiverse shenanigans going on, so you, so you don't want to do that. There's a nice little flower yeah. patch here. The flowers, yeah? Yeah, different colors. Right they by seem, the ocean. They seem incredibly specifically color-coded. Like, I don't know if nature is this um, kind of specific in how it lays down flowers. It is in, in um, what was it? I think China? They get a whole, like... You could, like, McDonald's could pay them and they'll put the McDonald's logo out there for you. In, in flower form? In flower form, yeah. Get just like for the town. Like, okay. I would love that. Know about all that. And then uh, it's right, it's built right next to the gutters. Yeah, the sewers. Sure. Yeah, right. <laughs> a little drainage right next to the meadow. Why yeah, all these, uh, all these pipes. So the whole thing in Final Fantasy VII is uh, uh, the, the evil corporations are sucking up the uh, life stream, the Mako, which is like the oh. energy in planet Earth. Oh, man. 
uh, and they're sucking it all up and using it to power their lights and their technology and everything. So uh, as soon as you leave the main city, you're like, oh, this place is like fucking desolate. They have like used right. everything around them. But as you get a little bit further away, you're like, I'm starting to see the greenery. Like this is okay. This is kind of cool. nice. Like this isn't this isn't a total hellscape once you get a little ways from the city. All right. Which, okay. How far along has the story come in this one? Because uh, uh, it says rebirth, I don't know where we are. <laughs> yeah, so the uh, if you're just uh, kind of viewing it in terms of uh, the original PlayStation game, the uh, Final Fantasy VII Remake, the game that came out okay. a few years ago. Here's a little bird. We'll, we'll pet the little chocobo. bird. Chocobo! He's very nice. He's a little chocobo baby. You find him, you pet him, and Me. he takes you to a bus stop. All right. <laughs> Which is very nice. Um, the first game, uh, Rebirth... Uh, is entirely set in that city, which is about the first five hours or so of uh, Final Fantasy VII. Yeah. But then okay. this game goes the entirety of the rest of Disc One. So this game is probably like a good, the good like middle fifty percent of Final Fantasy VII. All right. Uh, and then whatever they do next is gonna sort of uh, tie a ribbon on the story. All right. What kind of, how do they make their money around here? Is this an agricultural area? Is this a fish? Port this kind of um, so this is kind of a little wasteland, but we're about to get to. Um, we'll just run there because we're pretty close. Um, oh, and I'll call my chocobo actually. Uh, we'll get to a city, and really close. There's this little like uh, kind of a. Uh, the, oh. uh, one, one thing I like about the cities are they uh, <clears throat> they all feel like they're inspired by different cultures. And so this first city we get to is going to be called Calm, and it's the first city uh, you go to after you leave Midgar, which is where the first game takes place. Um, and it's got this like European aesthetic. It's got, like kind of Dutch, okay. maybe Scandinavian a little bit. Chat, correct I've me if I don't can. know my European uh, nations, but um, Yo, that's a that's a Swedish bridge, yeah. Yeah, this, <laughs> I know my Swedish. Is it, is it not? I get that sense of I think it's Sweden. There's a Denmark where they if they ever go to war, they will collapse their own bridges. And uh, I saw a picture once, and I was like, this feels very like that. I'm going to be honest, that's genius. To be like, if we can't have the bridges, no one can. The cars seem very Dude. small. They seem like little Yugos. Like, if you look at my, our boy Barrett, mm. like, how is he going to how is he gonna drive this car? There's a video that, of... Though. Like, Mr. Incredible. There's, yeah, like a little tiny car. there's a video of Shaq and John Cena trying to uh, fit in the front seat of a tiny of a tiny car, and that's what it feels like if, if Barrett and I try to get into this car. Uh, He's so in that little village where bodybuilders go. It's a little tiny village, and it makes them feel even bigger. <laughs> yeah, that's how you, that's how you feel good. Honestly, it's kind of what I feel like when I go to Japan. I'm just like, I'm so big. I'm so much taller. I'm so tall. You, well, you are tall. I'm like just a giant gaijin. I'm 5'10". I don't think I will be a, 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 a kaiju. <laughs> a kaiju. <laughs> um, uh, say you get to this Switzerland, there you go. Yeah, exactly. And you have all these different... Look at this. But this, this lady's just like... Wait, hold on. Spritzing, What's that on the left? She's spritzing what's, what's her all, flowers. What's all this dialogue, though? On the left? Okay, what's so that? all this dialogue is... Um, when you pass people just having conversations, you could choose oh to have it God. play there. So it's kind of okay. just like a running log of the conversations you're overhearing. That's nice. Keeps yeah. it lively and also like a little voyeuristic. It thing. feels extremely lively. That is one thing about this world. This dudes are just, Look at this dude. He's having his morning burger, his morning craft of coffee. First mm -hmm. off, can we talk about his cup is way too close to the edge of this table. Look yeah, how no, close to like the it. edge of his table this, this Is that a European thing of like, please, I'd like more? Oh, or, or is he, maybe he's a cat. I mean, it would make sense. There's cats. like that outer ring of the table. So if you'd keep your yes. cup on the outer ring, maybe that's like imploring that you want more. Uh, I need more coffee with my burger. Also, coffee and burgers. Yeah, coffee like and weird, burgers. <laughs> like a weird combo. Look at this couple on a date. They have to go cups, unlike that man who yeah. was sophisticated and drinking from a, a cup. Yeah, it's, it's very cold though. No one's noticing you. Are you invisible? I mean, maybe people are just minding their own goddamn business, which I'm going to be honest, sure, I kind of like. So you're asking right. about people. This is, uh, I don't know what this, this person's selling. It says beer, but it looks like they're selling yarn. Oh, so yeah, big. Oh, no, then they got like a slushy machine. <laughs> yeah, that's a big Stanley's yeah. uh, full of beer. Uh, one thing I love about these games is, for some reason, the chairs all around the world in both the games are just fucking wonky. So you could just, any chair you see, you could just, just tear the world apart. I wonder if someone's done a video of that. Like, I took this chair throughout the entire game. It's like... It's in the final boss cutscene. It's like our uh, our gnome journey in, uh, that, that Casey no. and I did in, in uh, Half-Life Episode 2. There we go. The actors 
What a lovely place. I like this. Nice Little town. Nice yeah. I do too. It's got some elevation going on. Yeah. <laughs> has though the dialogue on the left? Is it very sort of like a small talk, or has someone like in the middle of, hey, how was your day? It was okay. Someone going, I hit the body just like you said. Uh, that would be pretty amazing. There was nothing as cool as that. However, I did notice the small talk will change based on where you are in the story. If like something crazy happens. The small talk, like in this town, it starts peaceful and then some very minor spoilers. Shortly into the game, it gets invaded, and the yeah. small talk changes post invasion to be like, "Fuck, that was crazy!" Uh, when like the entire military came in in helicopters, that was nuts. That's kind of cool. Yeah, I like that. Really, like shifts the, the vocal vibe. Yeah, the live music. It's kind of funny because they're terrible. Like I know jazz See, is like in the eye of the beholder, but like. I don't know if you're gonna busk for 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 money to play your tunes. It should just be better. Maybe they've just they keep putting the money in the in the trumpet because they have nowhere else for it. So it's, it just gets worse the more money you put in it. So that's the thing about this town. They're too nice. You think it's actually illegal to be rude here? They're hiding some dark secret. Yes, yes, yes. I that's think that black smoke coming in the background means they got a new pope. So congrats, congrats on mm -hmm. calm for electing a new pope. I don't know. Is the pope oh, elected? Oh. How does that work? A pope? It voted in? It's a... Democratic pope? Big Rochambeau, I think. A big Pope Shambeau? Yes. Have a go. Last Pope standing wins. Oh my god, a little Pope Battle Royale? Yeah. What, what, what are they before their popes? What's the evolution before that? Oh, like what's their Charmander? Uh, priests? Probably. Oh, to be a Charmillion. Yeah. yeah. No, priests, they're... Um, Pastors? Reverends? Again, chat, chat, chat knows these. Bishops? <laughs> The Cardinals! Cardinals! Yeah! Scrawl! Cardinals are the Virginia State bird right there. Look at that. Yeah. Look at that. Little, little glamour shot. Oh, right into the mountain. Very bright. Ooh. Yeah, the lighting in this game is uh, can get a little wonky, compared, like when you go from like light to dark or dark to light. But, you know, yeah. as someone, I saw Dune 2 in theaters, and when it goes from a dark scene to a light scene, I felt that. Like, I was like, my eyes need to adjust. I don't know what's happening right now. <laughs> That's 4D viewing right there. Exactly. Snake in the Garden Euro. Can you eat ramen plus toilet minus real measures of game? Wait, That's... that was strange math. <laughs> what what game can you eat ramen and toilet? <laughs> I I feel like toilet ramen. Like I don't mind the idea of toilet wine in prison. I'm like yeah, you gotta do what yeah. you gotta do. But toilet ramen, I feel like at that point is like what are we doing? Yeah, no, like it's just gonna go down the drain. I, I don't want to go any yeah. deeper. Yeah. Look at this fella. Goes down even diva. Ooh. Yeah, we're going in like we're getting to like Miyazaki territory. Oh, we're getting lower and lower in the city. This has kind of like a little Venetian vibes, a uh, little little uh, little canals, hmm. gondolas. <laughs> there, it is. man who's only ever seen Venice. <laughs> getting heavy Venetian canal. vibes here. Me too. Uh, does any other place have, have canals? I only know Venice. I mean, Venice has to be the most famous. I'm oh. sure other cities do, but like... I hear it's sinking. Uh, yeah, we'll probably be dead by the time anyone has to worry about that. What goes first, you know? Venice or pandas? Yeah. Oh, no! Look at these kids. What are these kids doing? Grab assing? Yeah, they're practicing for the invasion. This is a weird dance. Yeah, <laughs> the invasion dance. It's nice to know. See, that's how easy going it is. When was the last time the youngsters were all just chilling outside? See, this this is a very, yes, pre-invasion. Yeah. These sweet summer children don't know war. It's like yeah. a classic for JRPG, isn't it? Yeah, it really is. Yeah. Um, and then the town has this thing at the center, which I'm going to be honest, I'm not 100% sure. This might be like their own little reactor that's sucking up. I actually don't know what this like piece at the center is. It kind of looks like Howl's Moving Castle a little bit, like... Yeah, what year is this? Uh, like, what year is it supposed to take place? Yeah. I mean, the, like, all the technology stuff feels very anachronistic. There's certain towns that feel right. like they're very old, and then characters will pull out flip phones. Um, sure, I'm getting very... Uh, did you ever see that Around the World in 80 Days with Jackie Chan? I did, yeah. Yeah, I'm like, this looks like Phileas Fogg's residence. I feel was like, what's with all this machinery? We as a society don't talk enough about Around the World in 80 Days starring Jackie Chan. That's classic. Arnold was in there? Oh my god. god. What an ensemble. <laughs> Huge. What do you got here? 
little, yeah, this is no, a little market yeah, items. No dispensaries, so definitely not any not modern time. <laughs> <laughs> this place was just selling small Moogle trinkets. I love this. See, this is this is what I want whenever I'm thinking like a walkable town, you know, walkable cities. Yeah, you know, exactly. That's where we live. A few a few steps out. Yeah. Some food. Some yeah, I can get my. Tank, I can yeah. get my. Oh, there was a there was a bar. There was a cool bar in this town too. This game has very good bars. I want to see if I, is this the bar? No, this is a weapon shop. <laughs> oh, this is that shop in the mall that where you could buy a switchblade and a and a replica yeah, 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 yeah. uh, katana. Yeah, this is like, like Gatlinburg. We'll yeah, say. you know this is illegal everywhere else. <laughs> Just a trophy. Guy, Why is this trophy here? He's uh, one of the best uh, helmet makers. Yeah. <laughs> I won this helmet making trophy. Look at that! Just a barrel of swords. Sure. Yeah, they must one. be. They must be bunk though. Like if if you're gonna treat them like that, like I want my Hattori Hanso, my like bespoke singular made. So you say that, but like uh, this the sort of like it is a tool treatment. Yeah. It, very much with knives. Like it kind of has that guy who's like, oh, I, I don't want to cut it. I don't want to use it. I just sharpen it. Yeah, it. yeah. I should use it. Yeah. Oh, this is the bar. The Rusty Arrow. I would absolutely. I would mm. come here, I'd grab a bite, or I'd saddle up to the bar, just get fucking hammered, and fuck with this chessboard. Fuck with this 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 little mystical... What is, that's the menu. That's, that? <laughs> you have to win a game of Queen's Blood? Yeah. But it's, got a, like, it's a 4x4. Four four. Hey, mister. You, uh, uh, I think he's hitting on me. Say. Oh. Oh, 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 that kind of bar. <laughs> oh, I think there were some bits earlier that we missed. Some twitties. I think there was a Lampy. Lampy, 200 bits. Uh, given one of you is a chef and the other is a sicko, your perfect pair to ask, if a tomato is a fruit, does that make ketchup a smoothie? Just go, to, go have some kind of dairy in there, I think. Yeah, I mean, my thing is, like, even if it was technically one... The way words work, we know what people mean if they want a smoothie, right? You can't just give them slurred, slurried meat and be like... But the way ketchup is made, if you were to replace the tomato with with a berry, that doesn't make a smoothie. Sure, it sure. A, it's just a sauce either way. So you need to add milk to your ketchup, and then it's a smoothie. Mm. Almond milk, too, if you, if you want. Oh, it is... Wait, what is this? This is the... This is, card game this is the game's card about. game, yeah. Um... Which I got, if I'm gonna be honest, I got extremely addicted to. Oh, that's good. And I, I have a pretty, it. I have a relatively late game deck, so I feel like I'm gonna destroy this man. Easy. What is that cactus thing? I've seen that. Yeah, uh, that's one of the uh, one of the Final Fantasy mascots. It's called the Cacatoir. Oh, okay. What is it? What? Is uh, it's mascot? just like a, it's just like a living, a living cactus that just like lives. It just, it just lives. It just hangs out. Hmm. Like Queen's Blood, like you said. Does this predate Queen's Gambit? Uh, no, because this came out a week ago. This was not the original version of the game. Okay. Uh, how do you, uh, what is it, you uh, purists enjoy your remasters? Is it okay to put a little chess game after the fact in it? I think I'm pretty I, ecstatic. I, I think it's I think it's wonderful personally. I'm I'm a I'm a big fan of this game. So uh, if anyone has a problem with it, um, they can go kick rocks. There you go. Like, like if I went back and played Toy Story 2, I had uh, Connect 4 second time around. Yeah. Sure. Oh my god. Horizontal and Marvel yeah. Snap. Yeah, that, I, I, could, I could get behind that. A little Connect 4 in, uh, in Toy Story. Mm -hmm. I don't know. I say, hey, Marty, how do you compare Queen's Blood to other Final Fantasy card games? Uh, great question. Uh, I think it is delightful. I think this game, I, I think it's right up there, if not better than Triple Triad, and I would love to see, um, I would love to see them actually do something with it and, like, release a solo version of it, release, um, you know, a mobile version of it. Uh, I don't know. I think there's, uh, I think there's a lot of potential here to do a lot of cool shit with it. Has it, has a game ever successfully gone from being a mini game to being a main line? <sighs> I bring up Gwent because it's the only one I know, but I, I'm wondering if, like, are, are they allowed to even exist outside of the main game? Yeah. Someone, we brought this up the other day, and someone brought up a great example of a game that ended up, its 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 game was better than, um, like, the spinoff was better than the main game, or became bigger than the main game. God, what was it? 
Easter egg. What? Is it Easter already? No. Happy Easter, everyone. I think it's Easter March. this month, right? March? This is Easter month. Uh, yeah, yeah, end of March, except that Eve got a head start. <clears throat> Dota and Warcraft. Yeah, I wouldn't Dota count Dota in Warcraft just because that was a, a straight up mod of the game. It wasn't like Dota was a little mode inside of. Uh, Captain Toad okay. was a game that uh, the Captain Toad mini games were inside of Mario 3D World and uh, ended up becoming its own its own game. Uh, Forgotten City mod for Skyrim turned into a real game. Yeah, it's more mod stuff. I'm thinking more of like mini games that the developers made um, that ended up becoming huge. I mean, like we can turn this into a full thing. Mm -hmm. You can eat Easter eggs early. No, no, you can't. Out here, not in the states. No, no, you go to jail. You go to like a full, a full on human prison. Look at these people. Look at this. First off, oh? this is environmental yeah. storytelling. These people have a nice little dance. This man with a bunch of flowers is just. What is. Do you think he's. He either like really fucked up in his relationship and is trying to win the person back, or he's just extremely horny and is like, I just. I'm gonna bring my flowers down to the morning dance class and I'm gonna see what happens. I don't know. That's that. That's that. That's oh. Right there. oh, she dumped me. <laughs> Can you help him? You should have tried to ask her out oh, before begging to marry you. No. He did a Yakuza. He did a Yakuza. He absolutely did a Yakuza. See, that's good. That is nothing. Like, that is. That's not a quest line. That man's not a real person in this game. And that's just him screaming. Like, that's a. Like, you didn't need to put that's that in the, the game. But I like that you did. I did, and it's there. Oh, yeah, this is fair. Fortnite. Yeah, it was a. It was the side. Mode. Yeah, that was a was mode the in the uh, in the original uh, save for, save the world or whatever it was called. Yeah. Yeah. Right. I saw Geometry Wars in there. Yeah, Geometry Wars is a good one. That was a little mini, like a loading screen mini game in uh, Project Gotham Racing, I believe. The rising star hmm. of so fuck everyone's chairs up. Okay, oh, we're gonna, the chairs. more of the, more of the <laughs> chairs. We gotta get these chairs the chair. out of here. I hate this man's chairs. Um, I love it. Oh, I got imagine being a super strong hero. And it's like, fuck, you're <laughs> stuck in a chair. Hold on. Uh, it's cool. And so in the story, it's the game starts in calm, and then you kind of have to escape through mm. this underwater pa or this underground passage, and then you um, open these doors, and this is your first glimpse into the open world. It's kind of like that Breath of the Wild moment, that like moment of awe. And then you get out here, and you're like, holy shit, look at this. So it's a really good, um, again, like that Breath of the Wild, right at the beginning, Link leaving the Shrine of Resurrection and seeing everything. Like, this is the first time you see the open world in the game proper. Oh, that's pretty. Which is really good. That. Yeah, it's just really pretty. Also, yeah, a small thing I like that Barrett is doing right now, I like it when a character's uh, legs match the elevation like look how his like his left mm, leg is like yeah. bent a little bit because he's on higher yeah. thing. I like just a little idle animation. It's like 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 Tifa gets bored. Aerith always always walking with her hands behind her back. I don't just just little things I like. Balanced and whatnot. Did, did you know that apparently Americans lean different than Europeans? No, really. Yeah, this this big thing of like Americans. Number one, they like to lean just in general whenever they're standing around, and then two, they like to they prefer one foot. Whereas the rest of the world evenly displaces on all fours. Well, not it's just they're, they're two feet. Interesting. <laughs> There's the American lean. Yeah, yeah. Somebody else gets huh. in the sea. If you're getting CIA training, first thing they do is undo the lean. In so that people can't tell, like. So they can't tell you. Yeah, oh my god! American I do like leaning. If I'm being honest, I'm a big fan of leaning. It's just illegal to chill in other countries. In other I countries. I don't want to live in that world. Too late back. The diabetes lean. Oh no. Oh no! The diabetes lean. Oh. I do like this. I do like cliff sides by the water because I grew up in the uh, close to the Virginia tidewater region. So there's okay. no cliffs. It's just like a coast and goes straight in. I love it. I always liked just the jaggedness of it, which was a lie in, in the Pocahontas movie. They're like, oh yeah, the big Virginia cliffs by the water. Sure. And you're that one person in the theater, like that's a lie. Mm -hmm. Someone's got to tell Disney. Tell them, tell them. Yeah. yeah, there's a lot of great... Um, this game does scope really well in that, like, you look this way and you're like, oh my gosh, look how look how much there is to explore. And then you look out here and you're like, oh, this is still just a tiny speck in, like, an otherwise, yeah. otherwise big world. 
Look at that. You actually, they're actually like showing the sedimentary rock with the different layering they, in this rock. They this really, got history. They put, like, one could argue they put too much work into this stuff, but it's stuff that yeah, I just like, really ooh. appreciated. I don't know. I just found, like, really, yeah. really neat and engrossing. They had, like, the rock specialist out here. Yeah. Oh, God. I wonder if there's, like, a guy, in, like, a rock guy in Japan, and they're like, we got to bring rock guy in our studio. He's got, he's, he looks at the game, he's like, no, this is trash. You guys got to, you guys got to step up like your rock. You. Well, like you have to reserve him, and then, or maybe he quit as soon as they were like, "Hey, we're gonna put yellow paint." He's like, "The yellow paint is not real on my rocks." Unfortunate. This isn't bad. See? No, I because it's, it's not like you can climb the rest of it. You need to know where you can climb. I also like the idea that the yellow paint makes it seem like it's spray paint, so it makes it seem almost like someone before you was like, "Hey, you can go around," yeah. or there's kind of a, a way you can climb up by just doing going here. Yeah. Like, especially given that there is this little facility here, I yeah. feel like someone would just spray paint that bit. Yeah, right? I'd be like, ah, this is like a shortcut to get back to the stables. Oh, I'm overreacting. Uh, 100 bitties is from Quintuple A. Anyone who has played both this and Final Fantasy XIV, how does the gold saucer compare between the two? Gold saucer, what is The gold saucer we will get to uh, later in the stream is one of my favorite locations. That's ostensibly like Vegas mixed with Disney World. Um, so it's just like a, a, a neon paradise that is directly above like the poorest section of the game. Um, Final Fantasy XIV, the, mo the uh, MMO, has a similar thing, or just the gold saucer is there. Uh, I, however, I've not played um, Final Fantasy XIV, so I do not know how it is in that game. However, in this game, it's great. I also like that Cloud is just like very sternly oh, yeah. keeping a watch on these cows to make sure everything's all right. Look at them go. We got the agriculture out here. Away from the rest of everything else. We're out in the countryside now. Yeah, so, and it's you were even asking earlier, you're like, what do these people do for work? You get to, like, here, and you're like, oh, okay. Well, I kicked their things over. Oh, there's a bunny. Um, you're like, oh, okay, these are these are farmers. Like, they have crops, and yeah. they have animals, and they breed chocobos for travel, milk. and they believe uh, oh. cows for milk. Did you say milk? I mean, I bet chocobo milk, milk would be pretty good. Yeah, choco, choco milk. Choc yeah. That's where chocolate milk comes from in this place. When I got to this little place of the windmills, it reminded me of in uh, Elden Ring. There's that windmill village, and you get up, and there's like the cults kind of like spinning around in a circle. Uh, mm. And the, I think that's one of the places you have to fight those fucking sk godskin duos. Those son yeah. sons of bitches. Dear God, look at this. Textured brick. Yeah. Again, one could say too much work was put into it. But I like it. Especially for this, it's like a totally... This is not a mainline place in the game. I don't think you ever have to go to this this little windmill place. Yeah. It's got the mortar and everything. Like, oof, it makes the, the open world feels just big enough um, to where there's always this sense of awe, but never too big to where it's like, oh, it feels like you're just copy-pasting. You know, like yeah. some open world games, it's just like, oh, it just feels like an algorithm took over here and... You're just like, you need to find a place to throw in uh, activities for the players to do. Yeah. So nice, like, driven roads and everything. Yeah. yeah it, feels, it feels like a lot of games feel too clean. This feels proper lived in. Yeah. Like for me. It's like we, were, we had to kind of coexist with the land as is, so we couldn't make it perfectly what we want, but, yeah. you know, we got close. Look at this dude. Just, just watering his plants. Was well, kind of watering the ground, but uh, Water, now he's watering Barrett, Barrett which yeah. Barrett should be very upset. He's just chilling. He's just chilling. I feel like a marigold. <laughs> <laughs> nice petunia, SVS with the five euro. I find this whole hullabaloo about yellow paint silly. It's like complaining about there being health bars or mini maps. My immersion. My immersion. Yeah, Mumersion. the thing was, it was like a. I think it was like a very innocuous goof tweet that like all it things was. on Twitter got taken out of. Got got pulled into the, like, I need to be angry about something uh, echo chamber. Do you think they get mad at, like, yellow paint in real life? Or they, <laughs> they, hate, they just hate looking at any actual yellow paint. Apparently, Musk did that. He hate, he just hates yellow paint and advisory stuff in his factory, so he didn't have any. That seems and like so it's there to, like, yeah. ward people of dangers. You, you can imagine he got into trouble for sure. that. So that was, that was a little odd, and also a big old hype train over on the Twitch side. Hey. Of things. Thank you so much. Appreciate you, gift and subs. Hell yeah! Thank you so much, guys. 
I love it. Um, one thing, uh, since we are doing this kind of post-game thing, is the first time you run through areas, characters will um, kind of like your your party members. So one thing I like is mm -hmm. that your party is, even though in battle you only have three people, so like in battle right now it's me, uh, Tifa, and Barrett. Mm -hmm. uh, my auxiliary party members, who are on the back lines here, are running around with us the whole time. It's not like they just don't oh. exist. And so they're okay. just like a little yeah. bit further back. Um, and during the battle, you can almost see them like kind of doing their own cheering thing off on. this. Yeah, um, yeah. Like almost like creating like a fight pit and cheering you on. Um, but that means that like the six of you for most of this game are running around together. And so the first time you go to places, they'll have like a bunch of conversations about the history of the place and about... Yeah. Um, Oh, like one of the younger characters will be like, oh, so what was it like here before the war? Like that kind of thing. And like, awesome. you'll get a little bit of that. And that's, uh, again, everything in this game kind of feeds into uh, A, creating a great, uh, my, my favorite thing, great sense of place in the world. But B, uh, a really great kind of camaraderie between your, uh, between your party, which, um, like, you know, in an RPG, I think is one of the, uh, one of the most important things. I like that they didn't just like here exposition dump. It is like you know let it let see if it'll play out organically. Oh, yeah, no, no, and especially no, like no, if no. you're going on like this has a road trip vibe without yeah. the car um, kind of thing, which is funny because I can see the it's walking in it. Yeah, it's a walk trip. Yeah, I think it's just <laughs> it's just walking. Just, hey, just if you're walking along, along a road, that's kind of a road trip. Um, which is funny because Final Fantasy 15 did that was the one where like it was you and your three boys in the car. Um, so that game was like literally a road trip, but like I could see some of that DNA going uh, going into this game, and I appreciate it. Yeah, well, we also got nine to five, gift and subs, hamster over there, gift and subs, hey, good thank you so much, folks. all around. Thank you all, appreciate thank you, you all so much. Yeah, thank you, thank you. Um, this is the uh, this is the Chocobo Ranch, which is um, oh, in Final God, Fantasy VII water... proper. You leave Midgar. You go mm -hmm. to Calm, and directly from Calm, that, that European city we were just in, you go to the Chocobo Ranch. So this is a place right. you go to. And it's only like a five-minute thing. You go here, and they're like, oh, catch a Chocobo, because you need the Chocobo in order to cross the swamp, because the swamp has a big serpent in it, and the Chocobo can outrun the serpent. And oh, okay. so it takes that like five-minute quest and like this entire opening... Um, like the game is open world in that there are five or there's six kind of open zones and the zones are connected, mm -hmm. but like they're almost treated separately. Like they each have their, if you see in the bottom left, they each have their own, like, Oh, you need to do these many of this side quests and find this many of this things. Um, and so, and I like that each of the six kind of represents like a major story beat of the game, but also, feels very different like you'll see the the other biomes we'll go to which we'll start heading to soon um just feel like geographically very different than this place which is this place is called the grasslands and as you can expect it feels like a grass it feels like an opening rpg uh, yeah. opening mmo area like anything like that like nothing too like, scary oh, this looks like the rockies yeah you yeah, start yeah. getting to the rockies you, you start getting closer to the mountainous region Loving it, loving it. Ah, with the dollar ninety nine, Marty makes a great tour guide, right? He's gonna show us a body next. I'm gonna, I'm gonna show you, show you where we, where we took the body. Um, mm -hmm. I'll take you to. The and if I had to cook a chocobo, how would I do it? Oh man, it's a bird, so right? Sure so it's, yes, but I don't know if it's a very lean bird. Like I used to have some very lean chickens, and mm. you do so much to tenderize that meat. You're lucky with a stew. Yeah, like, I mean, they're, I guess the closest the to like an ostrich, biggest, like hot right? wing. Yeah. Like, what, I don't know what you would do with an. I've had ostrich burgers, but I've never had like ostrich prepared the way poultry is prepared. Yeah, yeah. I'll just make one big hot wing. Delicious. <laughs> one large hot wing. Yeah. There we go. All right. So where are we now? We're in that swamp. Louisiana. So this is, okay. uh, yeah, this is kind of the swamp, the bayou. This is, um, when you get here first, it is very scary in the main game because there's a giant serpent here. And you're like, oh, yeah. this serpent will fuck us up. And it is a, it is like a, a major boss battle and everything. You need to get the chocobos because they're able to traverse the water and supposedly outrun the serpent even though you do have to fight the serpent. Um, but, uh, yeah, this is um, 
this place is like relatively uneventful once the serpent's dead because its whole thing like there's no one living here its whole thing is just like oh man i hope the serpent doesn't <laughs> destroy me do you do you fight the serpent in the same instance that, that you are running away from it um i mean you fight him all the fights in this game are in the op are in the world like okay so okay. like i think you get to around here and then there's like the cutscene of the serpent yeah. going up and fucking up your party and then you get off the chocobo and you kind of have to fight him in the water yeah uh okay my my I, I like those where it's like avoid them avoid them avoid them because you're not strong enough and then later come back it's like now it's time for the fight oh i like that too yeah the uh -huh. original game does the cool thing where you can't um you you don't fight the serpent like you could fight it much later in the game or you can kind of cheese your way mm -hmm. to fighting it but you escape the serpent and then you get a little further on and because this whole game is about you chasing the bad guy sephiroth he's the right. he, i'm I sure you've seen pictures of him. he's got a large sword he's got gray hair long hair long yeah, hair yeah. lots of hair um and you're kind of always on his trail he's always like two steps ahead of you and in uh the original game you escape the serpent you get a little bit ahead and then you just see the serpent is impaled on this giant like spear and you're oh. like, oh shit, Sephiroth did this. Like, oh, this dude's way stronger than we are. <laughs> like, uh, okay. That serpent like wiped the floor with us, whereas Sephiroth was like, oh, nope, no problems here. I'm just gonna I completely butcher this thing. It's my favorite. A snake in the garden, two euro. Why I love second win. You take my stupid question seriously. Take everything it's seriously. Serious business. You take mm. everything seriously. Um, Ooh, the mines. Yeah, Dang. this is like the Who's first sort of dungeon, but I like that it's a mine, but it's like, uh, it feels touristy as well. Like, there's a sure, bunch of these, yeah. like, almost like, hey, if you're a big rock nerd, you can take the mine tour and, like, learn about fucking geodes and, and minerals yeah. and that kind of shit. <laughs> minerals, Marie. They're minerals, Marie. Unfortunately. This must be King oh, of the okay. Rocks. If this rock's so got its own this pedestal. Is, this is, look at that. It's the, it's the second coming here. It's the second coming So this is a touristy area. And not yeah, like, yeah, yeah. This kind of becomes a dungeon because, of course, like, you're on the main path, but then you fall from the main path and you got to get mm. through the get through the dungeon. So we won't uh, we won't do the full dungeon, obviously, but we'll scoot to right outside the dungeon. Oh. Is this supposed to be, like, based on Earth? Uh, no. It's not supposed to be based on Earth, but it has like earth thing like it has cars and it has cell phones like it has very um earthy things to it which is which which makes it kind of like earth earth ish right but not earth proper it's like an earth tangent yeah that's what we're trying to get to it's what we keep sending satellites on we're looking for final fantasy uh, it has volkswagen cars yeah. exactly so you get through the mine um you spend a, you spend like two hours in the dark then you got out here. This is the second region, and it's called Junon. And this one's a little craggly. You're seeing that there's a lot of construction going on. You see this fucking bird in the distance. There's a big old condor. Who's that? A condor boy? nest. Yeah. Uh, and then also has a great view where Junon is a military city, and they're developing this big ass fucking cannon. So pretty much all of this is pow empowering that cannon that is um, that you can see kind of jutting out yeah, over yeah. the water. Uh, cause this, this nation is at war with, um, uh, another nation across the sea called the Wutai. And then another cool thing is you see that little airship that's, that's right above it. Yeah. It's propellers. Yeah. Um. Oh, it's just a hat. Yeah, yeah but it's, it's the cannon's hat. Uh, in, I'm assuming in the third game, but in the later portion of, uh, Final Fantasy VII proper, uh, you're, that's like the, the government's flagship, uh. Mm. Airship, you steal it and it becomes yours, and that's like your airship in the, in oh, the end wait, game so of Final Fantasy. So you're able to go anywhere in the world because you have that airship. Right. Do do all the games take place in the same areas, like the same continent essentially? All the Final Fantasy games? Yeah. No, they're all different. Uh, like damn. they're all complete. Like there's no, there's like they they share thematic similarities. Like all the games sure, right. are yeah. like crystals are important. And so every game has some rendition of crystals are important. Yeah. Um, and then it shares stuff like the Chocobos and Moogles and stuff. Yeah. Um, but no. that, yeah. some of the games feel much more medieval. Was... Some of the games feel hmm. much more um, like Final Fantasy IX for PS1 feels much more medieval. Whereas Final Fantasy VIII is kind of like way more sci-fi. Like you were, it's like you're in like a futuristic Hogwarts that the school can like fly away. It can like, the school can like 
move across the continent. Just like real life. Yeah, that's how we do it. And none of this is malicious. This is all like our, you know, our town is industrial. Yeah, so yeah. Like, when are, we need military might. Yeah, but this is like we'll, malicious we'll in terms stuff, of yeah. like they are like maliciously like the 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 government and the cities kind of don't give a shit about the planet. Whereas like your characters are terrorists, but they're like ego terrorists because they're like you yeah. are destroying the planet and. You are Frightened. literally going to kill the place we live um, if we don't do something to stop it. Oh, uh, yeah. Frackers. Pirate ships. Yeah, I even like here that you kind of... They don't go into it, but you assume that because of what they are doing, that they are lowering... It feels like they're lowering the water level of... of the, the lagoon around them, and so it is causing all of these, like, tankers and these ships right. and these even pirate ships to, like, just run aground. Because, like, that, you know, yeah. formerly, maybe the water level was, like, way up high, but now it's crazy low. Yeah, they're just haunting. Okay, they're just haunting. They're absolutely like the just haunting. Gotta climb around and whatnot. Ah. Uh, in the world of remakes, when should HBD be done? The original release of Final Fantasy VII, Final Fantasy VIII, all of them? Ooh, Ooh when should the HBD hey. be done? Or the HBD guy. Yeah. When should the big HBD... Oh, man. I think you do remakes for, you do HBDs for different, well, always my tough HBD thing is do you do, especially like back in the 90s, games would come out in Japan sometimes like a year before the States. And so it's like, do you do the 20th HBD <laughs> on the Japanese 20th anniversary or do you wait till the American one, which is like a, well, a year later? So that is, if you want to know my real struggles with HBD, that is, which that sounds like a weird, like a thing where I can't get a boner. Yeah. I want to tell you about my struggles with HBD. <laughs> Well, there's a pill for that. Sometimes it takes an entire year for me to realize. Uh, well, yeah, happy birthday. That's what it stands for. <laughs> oh, yes. I think, I think there was an ad for that during the Super Bowl. Yeah. You, you or a loved one suffers from HPD. <laughs> oh, I thought, the, yeah, I thought you were talking about the Jesus the Jesus washing everyone's feet. Those too. Yeah, Wishing everyone an HPD. Yeah. Uh, or just do it twice, Marty, says Lampy. Yeah, yeah I mean, it's... Approach. Listen, I've... I'm I'm uh, I'm more than accustomed to to streaming the same thing multiple times. Yeah, uh, anything in the name of more cake. Huh. Exactly. Uh, I've read a great story about Christopher Walken, um, who uh, was was in the latest Dune movie. That apparently he has this thing where he, <laughs> on the sets of movies, he'll pick a random day, and he'll come and he'll be really sad. And people will be like, oh, Chris, why, why is Christopher so sad? And he'll start telling people, he's like, well, it's my birthday today. And no one uh, like no one recognized it, no one celebrated. And the crew will get together and give him a cake. And at the end of it, he'll be like, it's not my birthday, actually. And they say he does that on every movie he's on. He picks a sure, day to can... be sad. Surely <laughs> someone would him. Google yeah. him, right? <laughs> Like a, like a Wikipedia, his birthday. Maybe that was a thing that worked better in like the before. 70s and 80s. Like you were able to do yeah. that before. It was like, well, yeah. I don't know. It might, I, I'd have to go to a library to find out what his birthday is. I can't get there. I mean, I mean he's like, he's made, you know, like Quentin Tarantino sad. Yeah. You know, he's made <laughs> uh, the whole set of Kangaroo Jack. Yeah, sad. yeah. Tim Burton <laughs> in Batman Returns. The whole skin Kangaroo Jack. Danny DeVito, yeah. <laughs> it just makes everyone sad. <laughs> all, the, all the penguins in Batman Returns are sad. Mm-hmm. Mm -hmm. Oh, Ooh, boy. Oh, baby. I like this. This, like, infringing on nature. Yeah, the game has a lot of really great um, moments of, like, juxtaposition of uh, uh, technology kind of colliding with the natural world and... Uh, you know, just wondering, like, oh, which one of these two is going to survive, if, if any of them. Uh, I got, oh, fitty bitties, Lampy. It was uh, Sarah's Rath's birthday on 12 February. You did nothing for it, Marty. But what birthday was it? Because didn't Sarah's Wrath come out in, like, 2012? Was it its 12th birthday? It's got to be a nice even number. I yeah, know. like, I do most my, most of my HBDs, I, like, are 5, 10, 15, 20, 25, that kind of thing. Yeah, on the fives. Yeah, I mean that's like there's no, there's no hard and fast rule about that. Like the only reason I say that is because I have a, I have a, I have a head injury and I like, uh, yeah, I, I, I like honestly, any sort it's of. it's go by feel, right? Like if it's the thirteenth birthday and it released on thirteen, 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 well we just got it. Sure, sure, sure. Yeah, that was like yeah, Skyrim about, was know. what eleven, 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 right? 
Yeah, exactly. So 11, 11, 11, 20, 11. Oh, we missed. We could go back. We missed its 11th. <laughs> its 11th birthday would have been killer. Oh, man. Sorry, sweetheart. That's why. That's when it released on the on, on the normal oh, console. There you 10 go. Ten years later, it was on my fridge. Yeah. <laughs> Oh. They're telling me I can't enter because I haven't done a quest yet, and so I'm just gonna get mad and I'm gonna I'm gonna slice all of their ornate boxes. Just amazed by how strong he seems to be, or how light that sword is. It feels like the sword is very heavy, and despite being a, a relatively slender dude, he's just extremely strong. He just got so many muscles. Mm -hmm. Just like Ash Ketchum. Oh my God, is Ash buff? He's got a sleeper build. I saw a guy. Uh, he was like sleeper build. Based based on what Ash just lifts, right? He's like he'll say, "Oh, he just picked up this one Pokemon like it was nothing, and it apparently weighs 500 kilograms." <laughs> so yeah, Ash got that sleeper build on him. And uh, we got here. Hiroshi with the hundred bitties head injury is the unsung hero of the Second Wind team. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So head injury is force. an honorary member of our team. Is head injury. Mm -hmm. Uh, also, Pundabaya, great point. This released on Leap Day, so in theory, we can only celebrate its HBD every four years. Wow. So if we want to do round HBDs, we're going to have to wait 20 years. We're going to have to wait till 20, uh, 2044 to celebrate its 20th HBD. Oh. Or will it be like its first HBD in four years? So four years from now is technically... Happy HPD, happy first HPD Final Fantasy. This game is only four years old. Yeah. <laughs> or ten or whatever it was. Oh, yeah. There we go. Ooh, what's that? Yo, is there a lighthouse? How you got a coast without a lighthouse? There is a lighthouse. Look. There you Man, go. What a, yeah, there's a light. We got a lighthouse. Sorry, I, I, I was looking respectfully at Tifa. There's a lighthouse, <laughs> lighthouse, uh, lighthouse, and there's a cool bird in the background. And there's a cool bird right here. Come on, bird. You need to get specific birds with specific uh, skills. Like when you oh. first get to this place, you don't have a, a gray bird that can climb up and down these. Um... Yeah, uh, it's a Chocovania. Yeah, All right. Chocovania. Look at that. You got to get the, uh, the the swamp bird, the rock bird. bird uh, yeah, yeah. You get a flying bird. You get a water bird. I love it. Josh Knowles with the five dollars. I want everyone who likes sadness in video games to only experience sadness in their lives. See how much they like sadness, doubt they will. But that's because of the juxtaposition, though. Sadness isn't as fun if, if you're always sad. Yeah. Some people just like a little recreational sadness. Oh, yeah, I love a little recreational sadness. Like inconsequential <laughs> sadness, like be devastated and then be fine in five minutes. Yeah. Catharsis. And uh, the gay bear bro, too. Remember for three months, tip jar. Thank hey, you. Hey, thank you so much. And mechanized walnut over on the Twitch side. Thank you. Prime time. Where are we? Oh, birthday. Whose birthday is it? So this is, uh, it's a it's a side quest that I think, it's, so this place isn't going to, since I already completed the side quest, I think this place is going to be abandoned. But it's mm. a, uh, I won't go into the super specifics, but it's a character from the first game who uh, has a recurring quest line throughout this game where they keep saying that they're a mercenary. Like, your main character, Cloud, is a mercenary. Um, okay. And this character keeps saying that they're the world's best mercenary, but they're fucking terrible at their job. And so every time you get to a town, you need to bail them out of, like, the thing they agreed to do as a mercenary. And okay. eventually they're like, I've opened up my mercenary store! And it's this, like, really, like, this. silly-looking, like, fucking Claire's in the mall. Whoa. Gift shop. Yeah. <laughs> what the hell? Oh, man. I love it. And Lampy with the 100 bits, but does Bruno come back, Marty? Uh, there's, there's like, theory crafting on Bruno. Bruno was a boy from uh, Crisis Core, the prequel to Final Fantasy VII. Uh, he was just a real shit heel of a boy that uh, I ended up uh, uh, respecting by the end of the game. And so we don't, we, I've not seen him come back yet, but who knows? That's what the DLC is for. Aww. I also He's like uh, I like that each of these zones you anywhere you are in the zone you can see the rest of the place. So like this is like yes. you can go all the way up to that cannon. Like if you kind of squint you can see where we came in and saw the view first. These are like the fucked up pirate ships and everything. Up here was the town we couldn't get into. Like I don't know. I like that um, like adherence to a geography that makes sense. There you go. Just seeing where you're coming from, where you're going. I Josh knows. I thought he was going to commit suicide. I was like, Cloud, don't no, do it. No. 
So I'll miss. I will take pure happy 100% of the time forever, but then it won't be happy. Yeah, I don't know if I would like... You can't do 100% happy. Yeah, like, to me, you almost need the... Like, like you, you, you need the bad times in order to appreciate how good the good times are. Yeah, I used to be an angrier gamer, because if it wasn't essentially like a 9 out of 10 or a game of all time kind of thing, I was not having a good time. Yeah. So that, that made me pretty insufferable. Oh no, the way- Okay, the... can we talk about this? So one of your party members is a, a dog, and uh, how he- gets he... his own chocobo. Yeah, and he gets his own chocobo, and he's just- it just makes me uncomfortable how he rides it. He looks- he looks like Tiny from <laughs> Crash Bandicoot. He does! He does look like Tiny! Shout out to Tiny. Yeah. And uh, Gabe Bear with the five bucks. Any plans to try Unicorn Overlord as a fan of 13 Sentinels? Hell yeah. That? Gabe Bear, I think we might we might do a launch stream on Friday. Um, it comes out on Friday. I was hoping to possibly get review code for it, but we haven't gotten it yet. Um, but uh, if, it, if it doesn't come in by then, I might just buy it. And yeah, maybe we'll, we'll give it a cheeky little stream. That's the... Uh, the game by Vanillaware, the the studio behind um, Dragon's Crown and Thirteen Sentinels, which was a game that Yacht, Yahtzee and I loved from a few years ago. Um, oh, pretty. Unicorn Overlord is very much a kind of like Fire Emblem slash Ogre Battle tactics game. Uh, they said story wise, it kind of is like Fire Emblem meets Game of Thrones. Um, they have their signature art style, which is which is really pretty. So, yeah, I'm looking forward to it. Wacky hmm. looking stuff. Lampy hundred biddies. What is a uh, what is a launch stream if not a HBD stream? Like happy first yeah, birthday? Like yeah. Yeah, like it's a boy. Well, that's like a baby shower, right? Yeah. Well, no, yeah. A ba I guess a baby shower isn't like baby shower is before. Yeah. What is? Yeah. What is? Like, it's, congrats it's, uh, on having a baby. Yeah, it's um, I don't know. You made it to term. Yeah, you, you did it. I'm proud of you. Good job. Yeah. Um. I've gotten Love lost it. here, so I'm gonna we get a little bit closer to the cannon to show some of my favorite cannon nonsense. Happy birth. Yep. Gender reveal? No. A gender reveal? Yeah, could be. Really... <laughs> hmm. uh... First birthday shortly is after existing for 364 days. You're thinking? I mean, technically, yeah, I don't know. Like yeah. your birthday is technically like when the day you're born, uh, minus nine months. I mean, but no one wants to do the math. Is literally your Coward. first day. Do you know anyone with a with a leap year birthday? You think that'd be weird? Yeah, actually, my my old history teacher. Interesting. Was, it was her fortieth. And she was like, I'm 10 years old, and I think I was 10 as well. You're like, what? I was like, what? <laughs> you're such, you're like, such a large 10 year old. Yeah, like, no, I don't, I don't think you are. <laughs> I think you're straight up lying to me. Yeah, I feel, I feel like you're, you're not a 10 year old. I, I was thinking it was like, um, what was that Robin Williams movie? Oh, Big? Jack? Or Jack, Jack, yeah. Oh, yeah. Jack, oh, Big. <laughs> <laughs> big. <laughs> hey, both movies about dudes and bodies they shouldn't be. Mm hmm. It's aging too fast. What's this? Uh, we, we're just, I'm just zoot scooting through. Usually this was a, so you get to here, we want to, in the, in the main game, you're like, we need to get up there because like the president might be uh, up there near that cannon and maybe we can go there and murder the president. <laughs> oh. And so you get here and you're like, hey guys, can we use the elevator? And they're like, fuck off. No, you can't. Uh -huh. um, and so you end up going uh, around the corner to, um, Kind of the uh, uh, the slummier, like undercity of Junon, to be like, oh, maybe from here we can uh, we can figure out a way to uh, get into the city. And sure enough, you know, uh, this is a great uh, this is a great little uh, uh, when when you get to the undercity, it's a wonderful little uh, uh, cozy nook of a town. Undercity way better than Overcity. I think so. Yeah. I, I mean, I like the ledge cities. Big fan. Ledge cities are good too. Just on the edge, because like under city, I feel like I'd get scurvy. Just not sure. This is like a problem. nice under city though. So this is like it's like almost a grotto city. 
So the Undercity is like these, again, like the kind of the Europe, uh, European centric architecture here, but then right above us is like the giant cannon and shit. And so imagine, imagine like living under the. I mean, that's what like the, the entire military the entire first uh, game is. That city of Midgar is uh, it's a two tiered city, and it has its top tier, and it's like a giant plate that is above the bottom tier, and the bottom tier has like fake sunlight. Like the top tier uses like solar lamps underneath them oh, to God. provide fake sunlight to the poor people. Is this a metaphor? It's a metaphor. They did a big metaphor back in the nineties. Big metaphor, like even your, even the sun's fake. Yeah. Oh yeah. Yeah, I like this nice fishing town. Brutal houses in the sea air. Bookstore. Oh, new bar. Uh, I believe there bar. is a bar oh, here. I think every city has a bar. And let me tell you, every bar is a good bar. Let me see if I can find that. I think the bar. Yeah, tavern. Thank you, tavern. The Fisherman's Net. Good name for a seaside bar. Oh, and they even got oars. They even got up. oars. Yeah, a big fish. They got a the fish. They got a nice little fireplace going on. A little picture of a lady. Shinra's premier wine. There's no bartender, though, which feels. And there's, like, very little booze. Let me see if I can see their alcohol menu. Is it BYOB? Let me see if I can see. It's got oh, draft beer, online. craftsman's brew, original recipe. Cocktails include uh, the Midgar, which is a city from the first game. The Sandy Sunset and Journey's End which is an ominous name for a cocktail. And then the Chocobo Vineyards wine, uh, the Red Ribbon wine, which is an accessory you can you can equip in the game as well, and the Planet's Essence. All wine is yeah, the Planet's Essence. How are you reading that, Mario? I got real close, and I did a big squint. Big squint, and just Some, made up the rest. Someone last, someone last night kept insisting I was very high during the Abzu stream because I was squinting. And I'm like, no, I've worked all day, and my room is dim, and my eyelids are heavy. And he's like, I don't know, man, you look high. I'm like, I would tell you if I was high. I'm was it a green high. name, or was it a gray name? It was, it was a great name. It wasn't someone I recognized. Yeah. Like, damn, Marty, you played Abzu high? <laughs> like, you have to, man. You got to. That being said, Abzu is a Colorado game. So. Oh, okay. There you go. First, uh, first legal state. Yeah. Yeah. It's always the greys that come out of nowhere and they it's tell always me more the about me than I know about me. Yeah, sorry, Fungus Finder, that was racist of us. We shouldn't be racist mm. towards people. Apologies. Oh, you also keep dodging all the greens. Yeah. But so long as you don't piss off the occupying forces, they probably wouldn't beat the crap out of you. Well, I'm sure some of you regulars who are still green have to have that turned off because I keep getting like yesterday during oh no it was during uh, Windbreaker during Windbreaker yeah someone I think like 70 subs were gifted right or something or 50 or yeah. some crazy amount what should we do uh, maybe it prioritizes based on like how long you're here I think it's a thing you need to either opt like into or opt out of oh, okay because like on on Twitch. Um, when you're gifting, it'll it'll go through like all the all the people who watch the most, and then after that's over with, it'll start that like, seems handing fair, out to anyone right? who's ever been here. Yeah. It seems fair to like have it go to the people who have kind of deserved it. Yeah. Begin the dolphin show. Excuse me. Oh, is it dolphin? <laughs> Excuse me. Uh, this is a little mini game where you uh, ride a dolphin. This game, Final Fantasy, includes every game ever, and that includes uh, oh. a little bit of a uh, wave race. Ooh, I don't, I don't know what the buttons are. Oh, left and right, surely. Oh. <laughs> okay, there's a drift button. You gotta hit the uh, the beach balls to uh, increase your speed. And you also have to slalom around the. Uh, is that the, that's the term, right? Oh. Slalom? You gotta yeah, slalom? slalom. Yeah, that's yeah. a good... No, let me go slalom. Yeah. Oh, shit. So this is just like Crash Bandicoot. This is absolutely Crash. Yeah, the old jet ski. Got him with the $5. This all looks glorious to me. It's a whole new Final Fantasy VII remake game with very little reused assets. Come on, PC version. Release already. Yeah. It's not on PC. Uh, so it will come to PC. Um, like, Final Fantasy said a remake came to PC. Um, hmm. However, it took, I want to say, two years. Um, and so I would um, 
wager to guess it would not be coming to PC until at least next year. Um, mm. I, I mean, I agree. Like, it, it feels like... I don't know. I, I wish it would just... I get... I, first off, I just wish it would come everywhere. I get j why Japan is just, like, giving up on Xbox, so that's why a lot of games will come there, and Switch isn't strong enough to run this. Um, but with PC, it just feels like, why why not? Like, just have more people playing it, more people talking about it. Because they'll mod it and do weird oh, things. No, <laughs> they'll do. They'll really, do, it's just this, like how many sickos. They'll just make it. They'll make a real dolphin show. Yeah. Oh god. Just replace the whole game with dolphins. <laughs> uh, I think the asterisk for this game said that it's exclusive for at least six months. Yeah. I don't mind late releases. Yeah, and those weird like at least things. I'm like, what does this mean? <laughs> what, what is no. what is what does that mean? I can see. Uh, I could see, at the very least, remake proper coming to Switch, uh, Super that. Switch or Switch 2 or whatever yeah. console they release next year, because Square has released a shit ton of their games on Switch, and I think they do very well. And Switch is huge in Japan and uh, means a lot to Square. Could it work? Could it possibly? Yeah, Pundibaya said, look at uh, Helldivers 2 selling gangbusters okay. on PC. Agreed. Yeah. What were you saying? It's crazy. It's just crazy that like the same place that made this essentially also made for spoken yeah same building i think <laughs> oh <laughs> yeah. that's door yeah was, it, was this there, maybe uh, just a, se a separate floor yeah <laughs> i always i keep wondering if forspoken is going to be one of those games where a few years from now we're going to get the actually forspoken was good and you were all wrong um, they they did for a bit. They were like, "Look, the parkour is crazy." I was like, "I don't think anyone said the parkour wasn't crazy." Yeah, that's, that's not one of the problems with the game. Yeah, it was fine. It's like a, I don't know, it's like a weird slice of pizza. It's like, look, everyone, it doesn't taste that bad. It tasted fine. It just gave everyone bloody diarrhea. Yeah. <laughs> well, it was also to me like, I don't I don't, I don't think Forspoken. Like, in no world is it, like, an incredible game, but it also isn't the, like, oh, my God, we all need to get together to dunk on this thing um, that it was initially made out to be, which I think people realized later on when it was, like, um, when you got a little bit further out from it and you were, like, oh, yeah, that's actually true. Like, there's some, like, real bad games uh, this year, yeah. and uh, this is not one of those, like, real bad games. Yeah, no, that was, a, that was a weird year. Absolutely. That, was, that wasn't even in, like, the my bottom five. No, so. no, same. I, I think every now and then, though, I feel like gamers as a community would like to. It's like, all right, what's this month's whipping post, right? Like, who, who's going to get it? And it may not be that bad, but we, we got to do this to someone. Fucking, yeah, so. just, it's just like, uh, it's like, uh, uh, like a bloodlust almost of, like, we got it, we got to... Like, we gotta tear into someone right now. Like, who's it gonna be? Yeah. Um, okay. We're going Glass. to... It was for Spoke. Go... The strip wasn't version. even a quad A game? Yeah. Was it a quad A game? No. Uh, What's the point of playing a? any games if they're not quad A now? I need four, a, four A's only. <laughs> Somebody's gotta mind the song. It is, I, like, I mean, it is funny, I think, to, to roast a terrible game. Sure. But, um... As fun as the roast is, I'm not gonna. I don't want to exaggerate just just for the sake of having a roast. Yeah. How uh, was this SBS with the five euro? Have any of you played Forsaken, that old shooter set on an apocalyptic Earth? It's cover. I could like picture its cover right now. I don't think I have played Forsaken. No. Dear God. I feel like From '98. Yeah, I feel like I could like see its box art at the store. It's just a. It's just a Earth with a big F. Like, um, like you failed. <laughs> uh, okay, we've reached uh, Costa del Sol. This is our um, this is our uh, seaside, beautiful uh, Cuban-inspired beach retreat. Uh, oh my God, we're in Havana. You know what that means? It's time to get our beach wear. Castro. On. Oh, <laughs> Castro. <laughs> You're gonna give us the euro step. <laughs> It's gonna give us the euro step. Did you read that story the other day? Yeah, yeah, I did. I loved it. The <laughs> chain being absolute, like petty. Like, sure, it leads to dunks and shots, but at what end? <laughs> <laughs> Apparently, Castro was obsessed with basketball, and uh, Che was getting mad that saying like, uh, uh, <laughs> "I 
Astro was using ostensibly what is now considered a Euro step uh, throughout the game, and it was like uh, a bad show of character because it shows like a lack of determination and the laziness on his part, which is very funny to me. Yeah, yeah, just like the way this the way this man moves on the court just is not befitting of <laughs> what was it, socialism. Or what yeah. were they fighting for? <laughs> it's not very socialist of you, bro. Yes, it scores, but to what end? Yeah, you know, it's it's the funniest thing. Uh, and Justin Dawn ninety nine, Marty Marty Bobardi Banana Fana for Farty Marty. That was beautiful. That was I was gonna say that was a rhyme, but I'm not sure if that legally was a rhyme. No, it was a little, little chant, a little chant there. All right, everyone's getting in their beachwear. It kind of it's annoying that you can't just be like, I want everyone to get in their beachwear. You have to go one by one to get people in their beachwear. But now we are. Oh, all it is just one stall, yeah. I guess that that does make sense, yeah. Yeah. Okay. I also uh, Barrett doesn't have like skimpy beachwear, but he has his cool sailor suit, which I like. Oh, is this a fucking? This is like a kitty. Oh, we fuck fucking up these kitty pools. <laughs> Get these kiddie pools out of here. I want the Final Fantasy VII kiddie pool run where you have to take the kiddie pool all the way to um, all the way to the end of the game. Save your aching feet and ride a wheel instead. It is weird that this and um, this and uh, Yakuza, the new Yakuza, came out at the same time and they both have prominently <laughs> featured segues in their towns. Like in Yakuza, you can ride your Segway around Honolulu, and in this, you can just like fucking get on your Segway and just abandon your party. Like, I don't they, trust they, they don't also can get a Segway. Segway? Oh, I don't trust Segways either. I didn't like right, when they I'm were like, top heavy. this is the way of the, f this is going to be the uh, 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 mode of transportation of the future, and I'm like, get the fuck out of here. No, it's not. Yeah, no, no. I'm just like, I'm very like forward-leaning. I feel like I just fall. <laughs> ah, it was ninety nine. Love fun basketball facts with Marty and Frost. I don't know if it was a fact. It was on the internet. That's, yeah, that's, yeah, that's my thing now. I saw on the internet. I don't know if it's real, but it was funny. I keep doing that with my Taff facts, um, yep. and I don't know if any of them are real or not. What do we got here? Corn, grilling corn. I'm a fan of grilling, grilling a nice little cob. Mmm, on the barbie, I say. Yeah. Love look it. at it. They're just oh. <laughs> look at these two guys. They rented a little little tent and they got uh, four ears of corn and a bottle of Jägermeister. <laughs> that's how you do. That's, just out here. They're just enjoying. They're enjoying it's life. A, this is awesome. corn anywhere I can get it. Yeah, yeah. big old corn party here. Uh, as a beverage, as a food. What are these folks doing? Just popping a squat, taking a little shit under the palm tree. Why, where, why, where's the group of men digging a hole? Yeah, where, where are those? <laughs> Very unrealistic. Was he proposing to her? Oh no, is he taking pictures of her? He is. Oh no, oh, yeah, yeah, you're right. <laughs> What's this guy doing? Marty's favorite band, Taft Punk. <laughs> Taft Punk, that's pretty good. Punk, this guy's learning to surf, but he's world. like... First, I mean, it would be v it's very impressive that he's staying just upright right there. Like, Especially yeah, here, I think it's, it's harder. Yeah. You know? I don't know how to surf. It demands too much of me. Also, he says these waves are killer. These waves are these are literally not waves. <laughs> <laughs> these are quite literally not waves. Oh, there's a man building a little sand castle. Sand castle? Fair enough. No hole but a sand castle. No. This man in full business attire. All right. Oh, is he the middle manager? He's gonna commit suicide. Ah, it's the middle manager. This is a recurring character uh, in the first game. You keep running into the Shinra middle, middle manager, and you keep hearing about his family troubles, and he kind of starts off as a shithead, and then becomes like a little bit cooler as the game comes on, and then he comes back in this game. Oh. God damn it, Jack. Uh, there's a Ko-Fi donation. Oh. Did you hear the D's Nuts thing? No. Oh, okay. Uh, I said, God damn it, Jack, which makes you probably think I'm insane. Uh, Untish, thank you so much for the support. Love you all. Love Final Fantasy. Never stop. XOXO. Gossip Girl. Thank you so much. So. <laughs> Fucking Jack Packard. The ghost of Jack Packard. Well, why, why do you still have your sword on you? You're going to get a wicked weird tan line. Yo, the, yeah, or that's just gonna like uh, in the sun. That's just gonna like uh, uh, <laughs> melt to my skin. Yeah, just attaches to you there. I can't tell if he's already got like a farmer's tan on. <laughs> oh God, like, got dude, little nips yeah. though. Like, I, nice. his, his, his sword scares me. I feel like I'd catch my ankles. 
you can uh you Achilles can, heal myself. You can change what sword you have. Um but my thing is I keep this sword because like this is his canonical sword and you get better swords that are statistically better swords, but I don't like how they like it just doesn't feel like he should be like this umbral blade. It this doesn't feel like the sword cloud should be no, carrying around. He should be carrying around uh, an umbral blade. It looks like a mod. Yeah, yeah right. It's like this doesn't belong uh, okay. here. This is, this is how I feel after the guy. Like diamond in Minecraft is not the best anymore. So everyone's uh, kitted out in these like purple ore things or something. I don't like it. Oh, this just feels wrong. <laughs> I I don't know if you can hear this. This laugh was this was um. The laugh people just heard was Titus's laugh from Final Fantasy X. That is one of my... I need to figure out how to have... I don't have either of uh, the Jack notification or the Titus notification in this scene. Like this OBS scene. And yet it still plays on uh, Second Wind Streams. And I don't... That just seems like a design flaw in OBS that I'll be in I'll, it should just be like play whatever's in this scene it'll be like what if I pull things that you have in other scenes what's going on there what are we doing OBS just for the funsies just for the funsies that needs to become the new Wilhelm scream <laughs> <laughs> oh what's going on here uh, I'm trying to find uh, I'm trying to find a bar monster burger I love it when well I used to when I was younger a young lad I loved whenever they named food monster Monster. Oh the yeah, monster burger, the monster nachos. Oh, oh yeah, oh. I'll have the monster. Oh, loading screen. We got yeah, we got to do a little. This is like one of the few little uh, loading screens in the game, which is kind of annoying that uh, you have to go back to this area quite a bit. It is a. Um, this is one, one of my favorite genres of side quest is what you need to help build up an establishment Wonder that starts off shitty and then throughout the game can get better and better. Um, so this is a, uh, a, a, a seaside inn that starts off very shitty. Oh, it's still shitty because I rolled back to a chapter before I finished it. Um, I am the problem. I am the problem. Uh, this place, when you finish the side quest, I guess that's yeah, good. I won't spoil what it looks like. It ends up looking extremely nice. We turned this real shitty kind of wooden shack into like a really gorgeous uh, beachside resort. Or I guess somewhat beachside. I like it. I like this. Yeah. Nice and blended in. You still got like the... More uh, down to earth, very human side of things, and it's like a big old hotel. Yeah, yeah. Again, like the game does a good job of uh, the the kind of the juxtaposition, and like it feels like there are the haves and the have-nots all across the world. But just because people are the have-nots, it doesn't mean they're miserable. They're still finding yeah. happiness in their lives. They still have happy. Ooh, every town's well, got a little got got their own little dancers. There are Teach everyone how to hula. Guy crying because he failed a proposal here. <laughs> I fucked up. I don't know what a hula is. <laughs> can we knock all these chairs over? Yes, we can. Of course you do. Take one with me to the final boss. <laughs> Kill Sephiroth oh, in the chair. Yeah. <laughs> By God. <laughs> J JR comes. Yeah. <laughs> now, if you leave this area, do your clothes change? In can you just... The game, yes. In when you're going through the main game, I like how I say in the game, like there's something else to talk about. No, he's, when you're going through the campaign, yes. Um, you can only wear the beach clothes here. However, in the post game, I believe you can wear whatever you want, wherever you want, mm. which is what we are, yeah. what, what we're doing right now. I wonder if this is the. This is like a little. This is like a neat little, neat little cabana bar. Got some hula dancers. Got got a little ukulele. Look at him go. My God! Um, you, don't, you don't fight people here, do you? No, it's not in this peaceful. town. This town is okay. uh, this town is peaceful. So are all the fights like uh, outside of towns and in dungeons or something? Most of them are. Yeah, yeah. Most of them are. Um, like the towns themselves are like where you get quests and where you do sort of the mini games. Like this town had a bunch of uh, almost like. Uh, I don't know if you've ever been to any, like, beachside tourist trap. Uh, had a bunch of, uh, like, uh, kind of carnival games that you could do. Like, there's, like, a tar yeah. uh, shooting range game, and there's, like, a really shitty take on Rocket League where you play as the cat dog. 
It's a very shitty take on Rocket League. <laughs> As someone who already I doesn't feel... like Rocket League, shitty Rocket League, pretty bad. Unfortunate. What do you mean, no? I can just oh, are you mad? keep him in the sailor fit. Are you, are, you you just, are you mad that I'm putting clothing on the characters? Well, we're outside at, like, if we're going on a tour, they don't, like, we're going to some treacherous places. And I don't want everyone in their skivvies when we're going somewhere treacherous. All right, might get poison ivy. Yeah, That's exactly. We'll put Yuffie. Awful we'll stuff. put Yuffie in this costume because this costume's cool. What is that? Uh, she's wearing. It's pretty much like hobo chic. Um, it's like her. Uh, at one point, she's like trying to disguise herself, what? and so she wears. <laughs> like, I want that. Yeah. I want that it looks outfit. comfortable, right? Yeah, I love hobo chic. Very hot, Johnny Depp of you. Needs more necklaces though. Okay, I saw Lampy with 100 bits said, as you're in the post game, can you just keep Barrett in the solar outfit, in the sailor outfit? <laughs> I could do that. As long as everyone looks respect, uh, respectfully. Yeah, a little Popeye action here. Yeah. yeah. Totally incognito, yeah. Maybe you're trying to blend in with like a, a clan or something. Yeah, exactly. Looks like Bluto. <laughs> Does it. look like Bluto. I wish there were more outfits. No, they're not. There's that, at least I haven't found more. I don't know. It's what a big, if we could take big this open world. You can't like find a new hat. I wish there a were crevice more. Or something like maybe I don't wish though, because maybe because then sometimes I play this, the, the like the Jedi Survivor games. I'm like, there's too many choices. Whereas with this, I'm like, no, maybe this is a good amount of choices. Maybe like maybe showing some modicum of uh, restraint is a good is a good decision. Uh, for a middle portion of the game, you get to ride the buggy. This was a vehicle from uh, from the original game as well. It's just like a big fucking truck, which is cool. And it's got its own tunes that it plays. And I like that all the characters get in. One of your characters, Yuffie, the girl in the front seat, gets motion sick in any vehicle. And so she's always in the front seat, like, just on the cusp of barfing, which I really like. Oh, no. Look at that. Look at that. Ford could never. Ford would never. Can I just run into this thing? Oh no. This game it's is gonna, all oh, vibes. Oh. It's gonna blow up now. Oh, this guy's a pain in the ass. He keeps going in. This guy is a pain in the it's ass not, even at endgame because he always goes invisible. Let me it's tell not you. turn based. What's happening? I know. It's the RT, the real time. Was, was the original turn based? Original was turn based, and you can choose whether you want uh, to play turn based or um, real time. That's crazy. See, they did that to attract people like me. Yeah, who was like, no, I need to hit buttons and let things happen. Like, yeah, let me aim. They're never going back. They're never going to make turn-based games again. Yeah, I think they're gonna, they're going to relegate them to like the smaller teams, your your, your octopath travelers and whatnot. Um, I don't know. As much as oh, I love it. Poor Damien. This is why old people like me hate modern Final Fantasy games. Yeah, John, our, our old editor, oh yeah, old place, he thing. was upset. <laughs> Listen, I'm a, I'm an old and I like the old Final Fantasy games too, but like this game, I don't know, this game fucking does it for me. I like, I'll I'll take turn based if it's sort of like tinier, I suppose. Yeah, yeah. Like uh, Golden, what was it Sunday Gold? That was fun. It was turn based. Mm -hmm. It was also short. I was thinking of, there's a, uh, I believe it's turn based, but that new game, the the Thaumaturge. Oh, I, I saw that. that. Yes. Yeah. Apparently, said it's, it's like. It's, uh, Disco like Elysium a... meets Persona meets Poland. The big three. Meets Poland. <laughs> the big yeah. three. Poland game. Yeah. Yeah, I think it was, uh, what is it? The ratings, the reviews people were giving it, it sounded like if you're really into this kind of thing, you'll love it. Yeah. But, but if you're not, you know, if you're just this, passing by. Yeah, this isn't going to, like, make you a true believer or anything. Yeah, and I kind of like those. Those games were, like, to me, if I ever see a 7 or an 8 out of 10 in the wild, I'll go, the fans of this are probably going to, like, really, really dig it. Yeah, this is probably, like, a game of the year material for the people who, like, really yeah. fucking love it. It's like those Yelp reviews, and I'm like, 3.5 stars, that, that'll, that'll do me. Yeah. Because you like five stars, four four stars. If it's too high, it's mostly people saying, "Oh, the atmosphere was great, the bathrooms were clean." You know, I'm, yeah, I'm yeah. <laughs> yeah. No, yeah. no one broke into my room at night. Yeah, ah, uh, with the four ninety nine, I love that. Let the battles begin. Squat setup remix made it back in the game. Favorite soundtrack in gaming? Question mark. Oh man, honestly, this is this is up there. The soundtrack in this game is genuinely spectacular, in my opinion. So it's got to be uh, what is it? Uh, Tony Ox Pro Skater one, oh, absolutely. I mean, yeah. Like if, if we're talking like licensed music, I think oh, Tony okay. Hawk is my number one. Yeah. Tony Hawk. Yeah, I was gonna say uh, 
Need for Speed, but if we're talking not licensed, then I'd imagine Skyrim. Just I still home Dovahkiin to this day. Yeah, it's hard. Yeah, if you've spent that much time into any world, like that music becomes like when you think back on it, you think back of that on that music. Oh. Music. Even I didn't. It was just everywhere. This is a um, oh. This is a, a Moogle house. So the Moogles are. Um, the little creatures. These are creatures like the chocobos that have appeared in every, pretty much every Final Fantasy game. Uh, and you can find one of these Moogle houses in each of the six regions. And you can do a weird little, uh, you can do a weird little mini game where you. Um, let me see if I can play his mini game. We'll do mischief level. We'll do mischief level three. So what is the relationship between these things that the humans have? Uh, they're almost like, uh, we don't really have the concept in America, but it's almost like forest sprites. Like, okay. like, you know what I mean? Like, oh, does Europe have that? I think, like, the, I think Ireland has the idea. Snake, you there? Does Ireland have the idea of, like, <laughs> oh, there's, like, a little forest sprite. You're gonna wander through Dude. the forest, and you're gonna see, like, a little, like, a, a, a mischievous little goblin that'll oh, they, help you these out. These like the, like, like, Dekus or whatever from... From Zelda. Zelda. Yeah, a little bit, yeah. Oh, he fucking zapped me. Yeah, like fairies. Stuff like that. Yeah, I, I thought you were implying more so. It's like, these don't exist in America. Oh, <laughs> no. I... <laughs> <laughs> oh, you gotta, go, you gotta go to Europe to get that real Moogle shit. Um, yeah, yeah. Yeah, we just don't have, like, I guess we have, like, what? Like, Bigfoot? Like, but sure, yeah, we do, yeah. No one's, like, chilling with Bigfoot, right? Yeah, no, he's, he's very introverted, that yeah. Bigfoot. Wait, so why is your character, Yuffie or whatever, wearing a Moogle head then? My is that not is... like oh, Yuffie's disrespectful? A... Wait, me like right now or your your party member. You gave them a, a Moogle. Oh, hat. she uh is wearing that as almost like uh how to blend in. I don't think it's disrespectful. I think it's like if uh you know, some people have like a dinosaur onesie or something. Yeah, but they're not wearing it around dinosaurs. Sure, like it would be disrespectful. Like imagine me walking around with a hat and it's got Gary Busey on it. But I mean, if you had one like dressed as like a, people like dress up as their dogs. Do people dress Is up as their dogs? I don't have yeah. pets. I've never had a pet. If I had a pet, I would dress up as my dog though, or I would dress my dog up as me. One of those. Two. Give it a human name. Yeah. <laughs> people or Jesse? Yeah. Probably we'll ask him. Yeah, Jesse definitely has like a dinosaur onesie, right? I feel like I've seen it sure. on a stream before. I don't know. Maybe. There's really no way of knowing. We have some good cryptic cryptids. Share a couple with Mexico and Canada. It's mostly just math. Math is our big cryptid? No, meth. Oh, meth. I thought you said math. <laughs> yeah. Our number one cryptid is math. Yeah, yeah. Meth is, is honestly our... Uh, it's probably a pretty big, big, pretty big cryptid. Yeah, like if you ever if you ever near like oh there's cryptids over there it tends to be near some like very uh, yeah oh, very druggy out of towns yeah oh yeah, yeah I'll, I'll be driving by and I'll be usually a bumper sticker of two Bigfoot Society that's a big thing near here well the the Grassman sorry it's not Bigfoot what they call him the Grassman here yeah they call him the Grassman incredible I like Jersey's that name. Got them, I like Jersey Devil. The Jersey Devil, yeah, there's the uh, El Chupacabra. You dare deny the Chupacabra? We don't have it here, in this in this area. We have a... Uh, um, there's a lot of uh, uh, Native Americans in uh, Wisconsin, and there's, uh, there's, there's the idea of a lightning bird, kind of like a Quetzalcoatl. Yeah, that's a fun. People say they see a lightning bird. Uh, this is... Uh, I like that you're in the middle of a jungle. You're just like mm -hmm. fucking rolling around, and then you get here, fucking Muscle Beach. One of the things in the first Welcome. game is in in the Wall Market, which is kind of like the Kowloon Walled City. There's just a gym full of folks who just love getting buff, and they've uh, relocated their gym to the middle of this jungle. So you can just come here and just get fucking get fucking ripped, get shredded get in the middle of the jungle. Here. Look at this dude Gold's just doing pull ups. Never. Look at this dude yeah. just doing his big squats. I could absolutely out squat this fool. Do it. I mean, I can you? Like, Cloud is notorious for being a great <laughs> squatter, as is Zach Fair, the main character of uh, Crisis Core. 
Shadow boxing? I guess this is regular can, boxing. Can you shows. box a little boxing mini game? Like there's uh, there's squat uh, uh, crunches. There's a crunching mini game. I don't know why we can't do it. Oof. Oh, it's because I turned the mini game. I think I turned. I dialed back all of my quest progress for this, um, so we haven't <laughs> instigated this yet. But yeah, Dang. in the uh, I believe in the first game it is a pull up contest you need to do, and in this game it is uh, a a uh, crunching contest. And there's Love it. Not not a big cruncher. Unless not a big cruncher. Stomach. No, it's too much crunching. I like Nestle crunching. Yeah, that's my number one crunch. Oh, there you go. Like pull up, squats, sure. I'll do different kinds of ab works, crunches. I feel like it, it just, uh, it's more of a laxative than anything else. Yeah, what are we, who, who, who are we trying to improve? Who are we trying to impress? What's going on here? They're crunching. Um, okay. From Lovely. here, we'll, um, our next stop will be um, the Gold Saucer. That was the place we talked the gold about. Gold Saucer. That was much our, our claimed slash Disney. Golden Saucer. Oh, car just pulls up. You, get it, yeah, you can just hit a button. <laughs> you can hit one button and you call your chocobo and you can hit another button and your fucking Uber comes. Just another car now. Oh shit, Marty. there's goddamn Drakes. Oh, kill your Drakes. Kill your Drakes. Marty, have you power washed the Final Fantasy DLC? I have, yeah. It was uh, it was wonderful. One of the power wash DLCs is uh, a room in, uh, Final Fantasy VII inspired room where you have to power wash. They have a uh, flatbed truck from the first game. As well as a cool uh, motorcycle called like a, a Handy Davison, I think. I think it's supposed to be like a Harley, but they didn't want to pay anyone, so they called it a Handy. And they, they didn't want to name it Clouds Hog. They didn't want to name it. Yeah, you don't want to power wash Clouds Hog. <laughs> I, I, I had good money for it. What is it? Uh, can you hit enemies with your car asking for a friend? I, I mean, the one time you tried, you kind of came to a you halt. just end. Yeah, you just enter battle. You can't like run over them. One nice thing is if you're in your car. And there's like items on the ground, and you run over them. You just automatically pick them up. You don't have to like get out of your car and like individually pick them up. This is so good here. See, this vehicle feels justified in this kind of. Yeah, right. And you you were talking about like how his oh oh how these are little cactuars. Different levels. There you go. No, we killed them very quickly. Like the t the tires actually bounce around and whatnot. Yeah, and you get With that elevations. vehicle here, like from yeah. a guy who lives here, and so it makes sense that he has that kind of like big ATV because he lives in this place, which would kind of yeah. use ATV. Yeah, um, Lampy with the 50 biddies, hey. D-pad up to raise Cactar statue. Why have we not done that yet? Oh, that's just, uh, so that is a specific side quest here. That did not exist in other uh, places in the game. So uh, there are specific side quests where you need to do things with these mythical Cactuar statues, and it kind of points you in the direction of where the thing you need to go is. The hell? These were all side quests I did finish in the game, but by rolling, I rolled my save back to... Um, a few chapters before the end, like the last time, like stuff was just open and like before you make the final push. And so, um, gold saucer. We hope you enjoy your time some of my side quests are all borked. Is this why you were saying yesterday you wanted games with like uh, 50 saves? Yes, because look how few saves I have. <laughs> you get 10 saves. It was less than what I thought, mean? even. I thought it was 12. You only get 10 saves. And so I have like eight hours in, fifteen hours in, nineteen hours in, twenty-six hours in, thirty hours in, forty hours in, a whole ten hour gap, forty-five hours in, fifty-nine hours in, a fifteen hour gap. Get the fuck out of here. Another twelve this hour gap. Just, this destroys me. Oh. It's terrible. <laughs> What's it for? Who's this for? Who's this for? Me. Look at these people <laughs> love dancing. This lady's just doing big kicks. This is how excited they are to be at Disney World. This is what happens if you go to Disney World in real life, you gotta do all these kicks. Mm-hmm. Only like this is if you show up without children, they yeah. Make you dance. It's just, otherwise, it's just weird. White folk Disney World. Uh, but this is the gold saucer. Oh my God! How many chapters are there? Says George Lucas. Uh, fourteen, thirteen or fourteen? One for each. Yeah, yeah one for each month. Look, these people dressed up as our favorite characters, like Cactuar. I like the cactar is like, oh, I guess it'd be like people dressing up as animals, I guess. Because like a cactar is not sure. even a character. A cactar is just like a, 
this would be just like dressing up as a bird or i guess a specific yeah. bird maybe like tweety bird or something like ostrich what about that little fat boy this in guy? the middle there oh well is there a real equivalent in this game of this or thing this so this thing is a tonberry and they're okay. really scary there's these tiny tiny like little lizard people who wear hoods and they have lanterns and they walk really slowly and they have a nut like a butcher knife in one hand and they won't do anything for several turns and then they'll use their butcher knife and instantly kill your party. Um, Old party. Oh, okay. yeah. They're like real, they're real fucked up enemies in some of the games. Oh, I bet here it's for children. Sure. Yeah. What about that guy? Is he real? Uh, he is. So yes, he is uh, a fat version of the Moogles that we just were partying oh. with. Uh, but one of our party members is um, sadly at this point in the game where I rolled the save back uh, is not. Uh, not available to us. However, one of our party members is... Oh, I'm trying to think how to look at them. Name uh, Kate Sith, or Kat Sheath. And the party member is technically the cat that is on the head. Oh, okay. Um, but the cat is a robot. So it is a cat oh. robot that is riding an animatronic stuffed animal. So, like, the oh, cat I speaks and has, like, an Irish accent and everything and is very, very... Or maybe what? a Scottish accent. I don't know which one. I apologize if I got that wrong, Snake. Uh, and uh, rides this big kind of, like, chubby chubby little stuffed animal, which is very nice. That's adorable. I'd yeah. play a whole game with that little guy. He's great. He's great. He's, like, one of my MVPs of the game. Uh, Frost, did Marty say you can change this to turn-based combat? Yeah. You, yeah, you can is change. You? you can toggle between if you want turn base or if you want real time. I think the turn base combat in this game is weird, personally. Um, you can do the same in remake as well. Look at this guy. This guy got so excited at Disney that he just fucking sat down. <laughs> He's like, I got too excited here. I need to take a low off and just lay down. Oh, like, dude, there's literally a bench right there. If you, you can go ten feet make, into a bench. I almost SPS with the two euro. I have seen that lizard in a robe in Power World. Oh. Square Enix is gonna come for that. Oh movie. no! Uh, it's apparently a Celtic accent. So is that? What's this? What, so which one is that? Uh, yes. Is that Irish? Yeah. Is it is Celtic just both of them? <laughs> it's okay, Marty. Just use Scottish and Irish interchangeably. They're fine with that. They're not fine with that. I don't. I didn't mean to do that. It was just I wasn't sure which accent it was. <laughs> Uh, fun fact, historians don't think Celtic was a time period. They tend to use Gale now to describe what folks call Celtic. So a Gaelic accent? Uh, yes. Oh, where France used to be. Thanks, France. What is this, a movie theater? Yeah, so this, uh, uh, the theme park has a bunch of different things, which I think most of them won't be instigated now because of how I rolled the save back. But this is yeah. like, a, it's like an immersive, uh, an immersive theater that you go to for like a performance. And it's, so it's like part stage play, part kind of immersive 4D thing. Hmm. Um, and it's really, it's great because in the first game, there's this character, Jesse who, spoilers, dies, and she talks about how before she became an eco-terrorist, she was, like, an aspiring, kind of, like, a quasi-famous actress. Um, and so you get here, and I already had the conversation with Barrett, but, like, you see her poster for, like, she was in this play before she joined up with the good guys and ended up dying in the first game. And he, they have this, like, really great conversations where he's like, should I have just said no to her? Should I have just told her, like piss off and keep being an actress but like I let her I let her join us and, and she fucking died on our crusade I'm like, damn dear god Barrett what There's getting heavy going on there. getting heavy yeah, all these tiny things and everything what is happening on this little stairless yeah asteroid? it's like <laughs> it's, it's like it's like a um, you're, it, it's like an airport escalator that moves like incredibly mm. fucking fast um, this might be. Gold. This is like one of my top five favorite places in the game. Too. Ghost Square. All yes. Right. A little spooky time. A little summer ween. Yeah, yes. Summer. You and I. Talk, you actually. and I refer to summer ween as different things. A summer ween. There you go. <laughs> no. Because there's so many horror things happen. Like at summer. That camp. is true. So it's summer ween time. There's like a little spooky haunted hotel here. And Look it's like that. real shit. It's just like the shitty, like, kind of like the haunted mansion in, in like Luigi's mansion. Yeah, yeah. exactly. Uh, Eddie Murphy's gonna pop out at you. Oh my god! If only. 
Uh, ah, with the dollar ninety nine, Barrett has the best character glow up, in my opinion. Like as a person, I think, or uh, physically, or, or maybe as like uh, in terms of uh, their characterization from the original game to this game. Uh, I think I would agree with you there. I love that. Um, I love Barrett. Is, like, it, is this real? Why do they have they ever like? Of course, Hogwarts isn't real, but they ended up making it real, right? Is this fictional and? has been made uh, real um, like in a, a Final Fantasy attraction that you can go to in real life oh just like I wish how great would it be if they just built this like little theme park look at this fucking look at your bartender like a genuine ghoul oh that's creepy like something Guillermo del Toro would make. right oh you're welcome he's there Ghosts. Uh, <laughs> Marty, can you show Kate Sith talking so I can check? It's probably Scott's. Uh, I don't know if I have. I'll try to find a YouTube clip. I don't know if I can just pull it up easily. Uh, Kate Sith FF FF <laughs> Seven Remake Voice. This looks like a video someone made comparing uh, comparing his uh, his voice performances in a few games. I believe it's Scottish. If I had to go on a limb, I'd say it's Scottish. There we go. Uh, Lampy Hunter Beds, did you roll back far enough that you can take Barrett on a date in his sailor suit? Uh, oh, I don't know if you can take Barrett on a date. I will say I did end up getting paired with Barrett for the date. And there, so there's uh, a famous thing in the game is here near the end of the game uh depending on the character that there's a bunch of like kind of um invisible stats that the game keeps with your relationship to the characters depending on which character you're closest with you go out on a date here and you go out on a romantic kind of like ferris wheel ride and one of them can be barrett and then there's two levels there's like regular date or um intimate date and like the intimate one with barrett isn't like intimate like they're not like fucking banging down on the ferris wheel or anything but uh it's just like <laughs> really like they have this like incredible heart to heart and i'm like this is amazing like this is so this is so nice what a sweet time yeah oh what is that yeah someone asked how do you feel about this golden saucer versus the original man this one uh I mean, it like just little. takes the original, and like like this game does to so many of the things in the original, is it takes those things that were just, uh, they were kind of just like, you know, those static pre-rendered backgrounds that only lasted across a few screens in the original game, and it like creates an entire, you know, world out of them. Like, I, it's just, everything in this game impresses me in that respect, where, where it, it takes something, uh, something that was so small and relatively brief from the original game and just injects so much life into it so just real impressed disneyland versus disney world a little bit like that yeah yeah do they bang down on the ferris wheel after the hard talk no they did not bang down no maybe i didn't do maybe like maybe there's a third level that wasn't intimate enough you have to like, uh, romance them higher yeah exactly yeah. The Wonderman Square. I think this what? is where there's like uh, most of the little mini games are housed. You can. Uh, oh yeah. Like you could play a bunch of the mini games to earn points. There's like a boxing mini win game, a, a motorcycle mini game. Um, win a big chocobo. Yeah. Yeah, That's you can unlock ticket. a shit ton of different stuff. I also like one of the uh, one of the mini. Yeah, you can play the Queen's Blood, the card game, you can do motorcycle stuff, boxing. Um, there was also a snowboarding mini game in the original game. However, it didn't unlock, I believe, until after there's an actual snowboarding section in the game. Like, you need to escape a mountain or get down a mountain, and so you snowboard down it. Um, however, that isn't in this game yet. It's going to be in the next game. Like, story-wise, they haven't gotten there in the remake yet. And so um, they have the place set up for the uh, snowboarding mini game, but they say like, "Oh, it's out of service. Oh, they're still working on it, and it's going to be revealed uh -huh. someday." So I'm like, "Oh, that's really cool." Of like being like, "Okay, when you revisit this place in the, in the next game, you'll be able to do the uh, the uh, snowboarding thing." 
You're gonna confuse somebody in this live service world we live in, where it's like, oh, DLC. <laughs> People are like, oh, what does that next, mean? Next yeah. season? No, I don't know what's going on here. Do you think they ever stop making these, Marty? Will there ever be a Final Fantasy? Uh, then I, mean, I can catch on. If like, I don't know. Like we haven't gotten, we haven't gotten to that point in games yet where like series have just been like something like Metal Gear reached an end but that was so tethered to one single creator and it's not even the like end end obviously it's like still coming back with remakes and shit like that but I don't know I feel like if there's a final fantasy then that means probably just like gaming as a whole is would die which I don't think that's true I, not that like franchise not that we can't but just it means like it would be indicative of like oh the entire medium yeah. has collapsed that kind of thing it would be like the same if it was a last okay. Mario game or a last Zelda game like that would mean that there are problems way bigger than uh, that single franchise no longer existing oh, man, these, these are like those are the canaries not even these are the pillars of gaming if they go oh my yeah God. and all of them they've like even like the Nintendo ones, like they're not tethered to Miyamoto anymore. Like they've passed them on to younger generations. So even if someone were to die, like that's not going to, uh, you know, that's not gonna gonna cause them to, uh, to to suddenly stop making a thing. How is it that they've lasted so long without, I guess, going Ubisoft? You know, so many other franchises. It's like, oh man, I wish you'd quit so long ago yeah i mean it's had it's 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 had its ups and downs and, and growing pains like i would say it's had a stronger last few years with um the love final fantasy 14 gets plus you know general positive reception to final fantasy 15 plus uh or final fantasy six, uh, 16 plus people really liking this but like uh when when Final Fantasy the 13 trilogy was coming out and then 14 initially launched and was like a huge dud um, I think some people might have been like, "Ooh, is this is this it? Like, is this, this this we might be getting a we might be getting a, a, a final Final Fantasy there." How long? What, what's like in between? What's the gap in between mainline? Um, I think Final Fantasy 15 came out in 2016, so 2016 to 2023 was 15 to oh, okay. 16 but in that gap they did Final Fantasy 7 remake they did sure. uh, you know um, but they're not slamming them enough to the point where you're getting sick of these no definitely not no like there's like we have no idea what Final Fantasy 16 is I'm sure it's in development somewhere um, but we have no idea what team is on that like that that won't be coming out for maybe even on this console generation that kind of thing oh boy uh, Frost, if you were adding a Mexican god persona in Persona 6, what would it be? Probably Shibalanke, little trickster guy. Let me Ooh, some trickster gods. I like well, that. It's the, it's, he's the Jaguar twin, so you might as well bring his brother Oh, too. hell yeah. Absolutely. And uh, Beastmars, $2. If gaming did disappear, what would you both do? Uh, I'd probably just, just uh, join Darren. <laughs> just move on over to films. <laughs> we'll just move. Let's we'll go over the next medium. Uh, <laughs> I don't know. I'd go. I'd go where, like work in a library. Libraries seem cool. You did that before, didn't you? I did. I loved it. I thought it was great. <laughs> Bring me back. What's up, Dewey? I'm back. What's up, Dewey? I'm back. I don't want to. I don't want to be at the reg. I don't want to answer people's questions. I just want to stock books. Yeah, let me, let me just. Let me just I love stocking. Let me just listen yeah. to a podcast and stock books. Read the book while I put it up. Exactly. There you go. Uh, yeah, I think like, if if gaming goes under, um, probably film. Yeah, I always said you know I, I prefer gaming uh, whenever when both are doing amazing and, and great. I prefer gaming, uh, but I think I can I can tolerate film more when it's not doing the best. Ultimately, it's like ninety minutes inside of your life, which is yeah. So it's not the worst thing. thing. Uh, this is the uh, fourth region of the game which is uh, probably the region that had the biggest uh, we were talking about glow ups earlier probably the region that has the biggest glow up in terms of this was a place that existed for like 30 seconds in the original game and they created an oh. entire region out of it um, that has like in the original game it is pretty much just a single small city 
and then um, this one kind of blacksmith out in the middle of nowhere who uh, is like his whole side quest is like he wants to build some sick ass weapons I don't have time to I like that he's like he's just like a fucking internet dude he's like I want to build weapons I'm an internet dude here's what you mean internet dude he just seems like an internet dude like the comic book guy from the Simpsons oh okay yeah. I just want to do this one thing Things with your attachments? Uh, uh, occasionally. Doing so ought to have given you multiple bone fractures. But this unique cylinder provides unparalleled <laughs> shock absorption, allowing for high impact performance. Who was the genius that built this? Uh, an old friend, I guess. Don't know where he's at now. Oh, is there a story there? Uh, wait right there. Uh, oh, there it. is, yeah. Um, yeah, Barrett talks about. Uh, Eureka! Uh, cause he, in his, uh, you get his kind of backstory about how he lost his arm and got a fucking gun grafted onto it. Listen, if I lost an arm, I would also have a gun grafted onto it. Yeah. Why, why, why have a hand now? Yeah. I'd have, like, a pasta roller. I have a pasta roller? Yeah, what single kitchen utensil do you think would be the most useful? Yeah, absolutely. I mean, I, I, like my if I lost my right arm, it would be a, a KitchenAid as well. So, yeah, so, so, so as I was done with it, I might just have a wire cheese slicer. I have a wire cheese like cheese wire, which is really nice. Yeah, yeah so you want to like, convince, a little, little piece of cheese? Ooh. Sure, I'd try to convince an officer like it's not a garrote. No, it's not. It's, it's too cheese. small. I couldn't. I couldn't possibly yeah. choke a man with this. You know, which could cause his pinky severe pain. <laughs> What a guy. Uh, as he asked for the two euro, he's like a fat Otacon. He is a little bit like a fat Otacon. Uh, Otacon from uh, Metal Gear Solid. He's, like, he's, he's named Otacon because I believe it's Otaku. He's named after an Otaku convention. Uh, where are Barrett's bullets stored? That's a good question. Uh, that is a great question. Is that? It's like Spider Man? Oka? Uh, I don't, I don't it's actually know. Takes his pants off. Yeah. No, that's a good question. I forgot we had a chocobo. You, right you got something. some saying spork, some saying can opener. Oh, that's right. Yeah. Make it a fapoon. Oh, if you get a little fapoon on your hand? Yeah. I feel like we should have said that. <laughs> you say that. Other subtitles are destroyed. Uh, ten biddies from Hiroshi. If the mass is abandoned game development because there's no money in it anymore, I'll be there to put down roots in the fertile soil. There you go. <laughs> Yeah, I mean, that's like the, that was like, I won't even say a hypothetical, it was mostly just like a, I guess a hypothetical where I was like, that's the only way it could, uh, it could ever happen, because yeah, I think I, gaming going away would be the same as like movies going away at this point, where it's just not going to happen. I'm sure things will change, so, but um, pretty sure the medium's here, uh, here to stay. We need our bread, we need our circuses. Like. Yeah, exactly. It's Gotta keep going. Maybe though, like we go back to a different kind of game. Maybe crankers take over, you know. But I don't think it goes away entirely. I mean, we'll see. We're like a week away for until the new uh, Lucas Pope Jam comes out. Oh boy! So we got the follow up like, to Oberdin, which is a cranker exclusive. Ooh, yeah, and both of you are gonna play it. You're gonna I, love I mean, it. I need to find my cranker because I found yes. it and then I lost it again, and so I just need to find it again. And everything will be fine once I find it. I got extremely lost. I do not know where I am. I just wanted to get to a village. What's all that gray? Is that water? That you no, that's to? just uh, gray is like uh, fog of war, but it's mostly like okay. you know you don't need to you don't need to actually get there because um, it's just it's not like I haven't uncovered it. It's just nothing there. Like no no golden chest behind a waterfall, no little cactaros. No, it's like almost like. It started off where everything was gray, and I cleared the gray stuff, and then it's like everything outside of the playable area is still represented as, as gray. And some of that uh, is like, you know, like this mountain here, it's like, well, you just can't climb up this. It's just a high peak that you can't get up, so it's going to stay gray. Uh, I think it's supposed to give the illusion that there's like more to this world than, like, again, you're only exploring a small slice of it. They're like, oh, why would you know? 
Uh, I think movie theaters will die reasonably soon. Their product just isn't very good. I, I think they'll just shift again with, to, um, what was it, Scorsese, saying that they are amusement parks. We yeah. treat it like one. Yeah, yeah. The anime, Roland Emmerich, Nolan. Yeah. I Greta mean, but Gerwig. people also said that about, like, that movie theaters, and then last year we had Barbenheimer, which was, like, a, a cultural event of the year. So, I don't know. I mean, I, I still think if you're going for, like... Sort of dialogue heavy, uh, I could watch this at home kind of stuff. I don't see the appeal bit for like Demon Slayer or Oppenheimer. I want to feel the, the rumble. I yeah, want to yeah. Feel and more like something the public that. public tension of it all. That's why know. horror movies, comedies, like those sort of like date night movies do well because people like seeing things with people around them. Like, sure. feeling fear is fun when other people are feeling fear around you. And Maybe, I don't know, like if I showed up to Oppenheimer or Barbie and there was no one else in that theater and I got the whole thing for myself, I'd be fine. But I, I definitely needed that rumble. Yeah. Uh, and Oppenheimer, the, the, I needed all that. It's just not the same at home. Where's this thing guiding you? What is that? It's, uh, it's almost like, not, I wouldn't say it's like the thing in uh, Ghost of Tsushima had that kind of like guiding wind. If you remember, it would be like a gust of wind would point you in the direction. Uh. <laughs> it's kind of like a, a small thing to just be like, oh, yeah, this is like, there's a thing over here. So you can you can go check out what's going on right. over here. It's, it's like the, the dead space thing. Yeah, a little Isaac bit, honestly. Like, yeah. Whoop. All right. Um, only things I ever go to movie theaters for are special effects late event movies. Yeah. yeah. Something I feel is going to be a spectacle. I, I want that. Yeah. Like a... Uh, like for some reason, my theaters don't charge much for anime things, so oh. I'll be there. You get like a little weeb discount? I think so. Yeah, yeah. All the other tickets are like twelve bucks, but uh, anime is eight. That's great. All right. Yeah, no complaints there. Uh, another bar. This Love has it. sort of like the rustic, what? the rustic look. Look, it seems like they got a pizza oven going on there. Little, ooh, yes, a little margarita. Get yeah. your margarita. Let's Can I just go. drink this? I didn't even order this. I just drank this. What is? Who's this? <laughs> oh no! This oh no! <laughs> cloud, cloud, God! Another. He took it to his head. What? A, what, what do I have? Just keep wing. drinking. If you weren't awake, you are now. <laughs> what? Oh, is this the Panera lemonade? What's happening? What's the, the Panera lemonade? Oh, what was in that? The most Marty, what music is this? Pop quiz. Irish. Is that what the answer is? <laughs> Was that know, Snake? We'll Irish? Is it Irish? If you're talking no, about what snake. song from Final Fantasy, it didn't ring a bell in terms of like being a representation of uh, an old Final Fantasy song. Uh, so this is Gungaga. This is a town that you only visit for like two seconds in uh, God damn it, Titus. Do, do you know these people? Why are you in their house? You know this this woman takes you in. She was a uh, she was a relatively main character in the prequel game uh, Crisis Core for PSP. And nah. people were like, I wonder if she's going to show up. Uh, she didn't show up in Remake. And people were like, I wonder if she's going to show up in uh, uh, this game. And then, uh, sure enough, she does. She kind of like lives in this town and takes you in. And she has a relationship with another character that like you slowly uncover the backstory of. All right. Yeah, it's not just some rando house you walked no, into. No, no. Although that is kind of like RPG 101 is just like walking to someone's house and being like, what's going yeah. on here? Is there a mission? What's up? Yeah. You need something? No? Yeah. Okay. Can I look at your chickens? Um, yeah. What was it? Where'd it go? He was saying, um, just teasing, it's generic Gale fiddle playing. Oh. <laughs> generic Gale. You know what? I'm going to start giving you. I'm going to start. Uh, all, all of you people who uh, harp on us for not um, knowing the difference between those countries we do not live in, we're going to start giving you tests. What's the difference between Iowa, Illinois, and Indiana? Let's see yeah. if you can get. Yeah. Let's see if you can tell the, difference, the difference between, between southern, southern Wisconsin southern and northern accent, Illinois. Yeah. Southern accent, Midwestern, and, <laughs> and. What was it? Western. Yeah. See so, yeah, how you do. Because let me tell you, I do bad at all of them as well. I'm just bad yeah. at all. They all blend. Yeah. It's awful. It's all just rural. Hunter Biddy's lampy. These Canadians can't even tell the difference between Ireland and Scotland. <laughs> Nova Scotia. So we just need. To... Oh, thank you, dearie. 
I learned all the Canadian provinces at one point. Uh, the provinces and the territories with one of those. It's like uh, 12 of them, isn't it? Yeah, I, it was one of those uh, those uh, sort of sayings. It was, Billy and Sally made our queen nervous playing near needles. And okay. it, it goes from west to east. And so it's like British Columbia, Alberta, Saskatchewan, Manitoba, Ontario, Quebec... Newfoundland, Nova Scotia, I think something like that. Did that work? Do you have a map of Canada? Can you pull up a map of Canada? Can we see if I can at least get the first like seven right? The first seven right, yes, yeah. Say. Okay. Uh, I said British Columbia, yeah, Alberta, so Saskatchewan. Yeah, Brilliant. I didn't hear a Manitoba. Manitoba. I th uh, Ontario, uh, Quebec. Quebec. These are tiny. And then uh, P is New Prince. Brunswick. New Brunswick. There's New Brunswick, a... Nova Scotia, Prince Edward. Prince Edward? Who's that? I don't know. Newfoundland and Labrador. Labrador? Uh, like the dog? You like the dog, yeah. Uh, none of it. None of it? Northwest Territories and Yukon. They seem to have added DLC since you remembered this. <laughs> Also, none of it sounds like if you ask someone, like, how much shit are you putting up with today, then their answer is going to be none of it. None of it, yeah, no. Uh, Prince Edward Island is very pretty. Why isn't Kansas City in Kansas? That's a real one. That's a great question. I have no answer to that. Yeah, I got shit from a couple people about not knowing what a logarithm is. I haven't taken a math class in 20 fucking years, and I don't you care. You wouldn't get those in your kind of math classes. And I just don't that, care about math. Math and science, that's not my job. That's not my gig. I don't need to know that. I need to know... I, you know what I like knowing? I like knowing 50% of facts. I like knowing a fact, <laughs> but not getting it totally right. I like knowing them just enough. I just, I just like spreading misinformation. That's what I like and about it, my Taft if facts. If a fact makes you go, no way, no way. I like it's keeping like, Taft yeah. in the cultural conversation. <laughs> and who knows if whether that's real or not but it's you know what taft is getting the love he may or may not deserve i still haven't looked up taft to know i'm sure he's got some policies i would be vehemently disagree with probably no i don't know he got stuck in the tub what does he know yeah tubs were smaller back then did you know see they probably they probably grew because of him oh no, someone had a great maybe. taft fact yesterday during our stream and i don't know if it was real that was the seventh inning stretch and that was you no that was <laughs> no 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 <laughs> No, no, no. Oh, he uh, he got rid of White House horse stables and replaced them with White House garages. Oh. Yeah. Well, someone had to, I suppose. Yeah. yeah. That's interesting. Imagine being the guy that not, not not like essentially kills the horse and it's like, we're doing cars now. Yeah, just being there that's, at that that's precipice crazy. of change. Yeah, and like, you know, we're, we're doing solar, and then Reagan's like, nah. Yeah. <laughs> I got like imagine, you. imagine if Taft gets rid of horses for cars, and then the next president's like, "No, we're going back to horses." Like, that oh, shit. Yeah, shit. Yeah. Like, uh what now? Uh, Snake, five euro. Don't worry, Marty. Met many English while I lived in UK who didn't know anything about Ireland, so I expect zero. Just teasing, because you're nice about it. No, um, I, 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 I know you're goofing. Uh, my main uh, thing is, I never want, uh, I never want people to think my mistakes are like out of malice or out of like, fucking being like oh there's no difference between those countries that kind of thing because like there's like there's like a very bloody history between a lot of those countries and so i wouldn't i wouldn't dare to say that but um I'm just, if, they, I'm just if they want your they want your affection the way you're affectionate about japan europe wants that yeah that's why i don't like anyone otherwise they'll all ask hey, how about my stuff yeah <laughs> don't don't show your uh don't, don't don't show your 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 favor towards anything yeah yeah no um, special, special for optimistic people. As we oh. wrap up the stream, this is the uh, final city we'll go to. This is Cosmo Canyon, which is um, it's where our dog friend is from. Uh, where's our dog? Back here. He grew up here. This place is almost like part, like, this is kind of like a, the spiritual center of uh, the world. It's kind of like a part Mecca. People making a pilgrimage here. Definitely has some, like, Native American uh influences to it um this whole if this this region this open world region definitely is the arizona of uh of the game <laughs> as all open world uh, games have in arizona uh, yeah this looks more Tucson. yeah oh this is definitely just yeah 
climbing around, all that good stuff. You don't declare God bless America, at least. God bless them all. <laughs> God bless us, everyone. Music here is popping. Oh, What's going yeah. On? And this is a... This is a song from uh, a remix of a song from the original game. One of the one of the all timers from the original game. Yeah, Cosmo so it sounds like this. Sounds like the start of Jackie Chan's Drunken Fist. Oh my God! Don't tell me with a good time. For the train scene. Oh yeah. Just two more Fifty hours. Bitties, we have to do a rewatch of Drunken Fist. What's for next movie night? There you oh go. my God! It's coming. Uh, <laughs> can you show us the floaty old man? Says Lampy. Bugenhagen. We can end the stream on a nice little Bugenhagen. Let's see if Marty remembers how to get up there. Gonna throw Baird off, jeez. <laughs> like how your party members can, like they bump into each other. Yeah, like oh, oh shit. Oh, God. Oh, like there's two. Man. There's too many. I'll just fast travel there because I don't know how to get up there. Um, Bernard. Oh, oh Cosmo elevator. Canyon. Yeah, that's what you guys are into. Oh, kid. Oh, kids love the Cosmo. Oh, I'm right next to the elevator. I was like, where is the elevator? I'm literally next to it. I'm standing on. <laughs> Calls coming from inside the house. See, this would be weird if we were all half naked. We'd be like walking around this like it'd be like going to go into like a spiritual center. You can't go to church in your swimming trunks. This, what? This is a church? No, it's just like a very spiritual. This is like the planet's church. Okay. This place like communes. They're not religious in the religious aspect. They're religious in that they commune with Mother mm. Earth. Yeah. And so they're the ones when like. While the rest of the cities are like fucking soaking up that life energy, they're like, no, we need to help the planet because the planet is dying. Oh, okay. All right. Huh. You're going to the wrong church if you can't show up in beachwear. <laughs> some some churches do that because of the, the sermon by the beach side. They'll have a beach day. The beach episode of church. Uh, I, w I would love a little church beach episode. Are you kidding me? I'm trying to think. Is uh, I think honest. hippie commune. Ah. Uh. Yeah, a little bit of a hippie commune. Yeah, I can, I can, I can get behind that. Okay, this is Bukenagan's observatory. So this is where the dispensaries are. Okay. This is <laughs> oh my! Oh, I hear Bukenagan. His name popped up. SBS five euro. Oh. Need to fight Sephiroth naked to assert dominance. That's that is true. There he is. Everyone's favorite old man riding an orb. This is like uh, so the the dog the dog man. This uh, old man raised the dog um, after his parents died. And he just Aww. chills. He just like lives on this orb. He's just like rolling around on an orb. Just pondering. Yeah, he's oh, he's doing a lot of pondering. I think it's little glasses. I was thinking of getting some little glasses. Ah, uh, dogs. Oh yeah. <laughs> he also at this point he might have a different voice. Which, Why should talk like a child? So he doesn't at the beginning of the game. At the beginning of the All game, right. he talks very scary. Uh, and then when he gets back home. He kind of is like, oh yeah, that's kind of like a front. I'm like a 16 year old kid. <laughs> like I'm a, I'm a child dog. Like I was just putting on like a, a mean voice. What the hell? Oh, just live in the orb. Like, would you live on an orb if you could? I would. Yes, I like his place. Yeah. Look at that. It's weird. He's got this orb that floats, but he's got ladders too. Yeah, well, he's got like a lot of like uh, people in here who need uh, oh, okay. like they don't they don't have their own orbs, so they need to do some climbing. Yeah, he's not a lewd old man. He looks like Master Roshi. He's he got does, Master Roshi like, vibes, he's, but he's not horned up like Master Roshi at all. Gives that perverted old man yeah. vibe. Um, all right, so we have we have reached the end of our vibe check. This is great. We should do this every once in a while if we get a game with good vibes. We'll we'll do another vibe check stream. Where we just wander it around demands it. And all, show all these people, open world games. Show people the games. Yeah, I mean that's what. Listen, if you're gonna make a world and have us live in it for a hundred hours, you better have two hours worth of good vibes. In there. <laughs> uh, Frost, what do you uh, what do you have going on? What should folks check out? So here, uh, Cold Take Review went out for Skull and Bones. It was yeah, a good old time. Let's do numbers. Yeah, you know, wet, wet and mild as uh, as it'll be. So wet. It was a game. It's yes, exactly how week. I like my uh, my chicken cooked. Wet and mild. Yeah, wet, yeah. wet and mild. It was a game. And then uh, next week's will be Bellatro. Uh, but as far as streams go, tomorrow it's going to be uh, Winter Survival. It's going to be Jay and I. We're going to yeah. be. Uh, I ran a few a few or first few minutes to see how it ran, and I was already like, oh, yeah, oh, it's okay, like uh, the film The Gray. If you would just yeah. live the life of Liam Neeson in the gray, 
that's what we're going to be playing. So that'll be yeah, uh, noon like, central okay. tomorrow. Mm, noon central. You heard the man. And uh, yeah, that should be it. Excellent. Yeah, um, yeah. Check out uh, in terms of edited videos. Aside from Frost's, uh, check out Darren's new episode of The Backdrop. Went out today. It's on Dune. It's mostly on Dune uh, Part One and uh, kind of the Dune books. So he, uh, I think he, he wrote the script before he saw Dune Two. So don't worry about Dune Two spoilers. But it's a great, uh, great video. Highly recommend you checking it out. Uh, of course, Darren crushes it always. Uh, Jesse with a wonderful edit. So um, check that out. And then, yeah, otherwise, check out the stream tomorrow. We'll probably have a Thursday and Friday stream as well. We'll, we'll lock down details on that. Um, but, um, yeah, we'll keep you guys posted. Also, SES Guru with a two euro dono. Thank you so much. I always thought he was some kind of panther. I call, yeah, he's like a cat dog. He's got, he's, got, he's got traits that are similar to both of them, right? I don't know. W- would you say he's more cat or dog? I don't know. He's a child. So, but it's yeah. never leaving me. He's got tattoos too. I saw. Yeah, his name. he was in. Uh, he was in. Uh, he was like imprisoned by the evil corporation. They did a bunch of tests on him. Yeah, so was, I was like, is this? Is he willing, or is this like a rocket raccoon? No. Yeah, he's got like number thirteen on him. That's why you call him Red Thirteen, is because that was his designation by the evil scientists. Aww. But he gets his real name back. His real name's Nanaki. Oh, he gets back in this game, which is great. Oh, that's good. Uh, yeah, so check out all that stuff, and then, uh, yeah, Lampy, I'll be streaming uh, later this evening, normal time, I'll be finishing, speaking of tattooed children, I'll be finishing uh, The Last Guardian. Um, they got tattoos! The little kid is, is all tatted up, yeah, like tribal tats. Kind of. <laughs> Alright, there you go. Yeah. And, uh, and it's children. another game where I can't tell what animal the thing is, and so I call it a bird dog, even though it's mostly cat-like, so there you go. <laughs> Uh, so for Frost, this is Marty. Thank you all so much uh, for tuning in. Thank you to everyone who, who donated and just hung out and, and uh, added to the good vibes of the game. I uh, hope you all have a wonderful rest of your afternoons. Uh, and we'll see you back here uh, tomorrow, 24 hours from now. Uh, we'll see you back here for uh, Winter Survival. So we'll see you then. Bye, everyone.